paddling in the pool of water at the is. other boats. You must always just look at the space in front of you. Uh, that's Kisley laying down the law. Here comes Cobra. It's Cobra. He's taking Campos on. Stroke by stroke, he's going past him. And he's gone past him like he's standing still. What a race. What a race. God, be I calm, Gagin. Be calm, be calm, be calm. The Hungarians are away. The South Africans are South away. Africa side by away. side. By but it's side. Hungary. Hungary take the initiative. Mass of quality panels. You see collision in the background. World champ. Look at that. Pro, that's going to be. Republic. That's going to be tears. It's going to be laughing. Yeah. She can't believe it. She's so happy. is going to get squeezed out. That is dangerously oh, close yeah. to the edge. It is McGregor. It is McGregor. No one has given up. Boris is hanging on. Alonso is hanging on. Gold medalist Hank McGregor, South Africa. Good morning and welcome back to Bosco, Romania. It's a wonderful morning here and it's the final day of the World Championships on this beautiful river. Uh, what do you think of today, uh, Ivan? Well, the lake looks fantastic already. It was flat as you like this morning, mist hanging over the water as it's quite cold there still in the mornings. You can see now the cloud in the background, but it's all going to clear. K2s today, juniors first then the C2, then the women's K2, then the men's K2. So many players that we've already seen in the weekend. Some have done well. Some are using this as their opportunity to, <clears throat> excuse me, redeem themselves. And uh, it's going to be fantastic again, Stefan. Absolutely. And the conditions here have been marvellous uh, over, over the weekend in this beautiful area. And let's have a, a look at that.
Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, area of uh, of uh, Romania, and there's so many beautiful places in the world we we got to visit uh, on on these events. And uh, I'm already looking forward to to next year in Portugal. But let's focus on this final great day of uh, Canoe Marathon World Championships 2021 here in Romania first, and it's K2 men juniors com coming up. This is the course we'll be using as we have all week. Everyone starts with one long lap marked in yellow. Back to the start, turn around, this time no portage. Then it's on to the laps with portages marked in red. Exactly the same course, but at the end of the circuit this time we'll come over onto the portage and then onto the final lap, which is just a thousand meter lap up round the boys and back to the finish. Number of red laps depends on what class you're in. And the longer the seniors do eight laps, the women do seven and the juniors, I think. I'm, I'm being challenged now, seven. I think it's five laps, six laps. Six laps six and five, laps. And so five quarters. Yeah. I'm so close to nailing that. One job I had to do this morning, Stefan, and I failed. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how cold it is there, four degrees. Yeah, but that's warming up and uh, wind speed of basically nothing and the course is sheltered anyway so it's uh, pretty much guaranteed perfect position perfect conditions for the day the chief official uh, Ruth Haisler um, have been running these events for quite many years now as alongside quite many of the international organizers they're doing a great job to run all these races over over uh, over a day in a, in a quite tight schedule. This is what's coming up today. So medal table tells the usual story there, Stefan. At the top and way ahead of the others are Hungary. Denmark, their resurgence is evident on the medal table. They were so good, 80s and 90s, then they had a bit of a lull, and now they're back, most definitely. And good to see medals going to so many countries as well. Yes, yes. It's good uh, for Denmark that uh, has uh, world championships coming up in 2023. So K2 men juniors, double kayaks, sat down in the kayak, double-ended blade, rudder at the back of the boat, a front man steers, the back man provides the uh, power and hopefully we'll have a good one. Here's the start list for the junior men's K2, Simpkins and Kutzer from South Africa, Hasco Didier from France, Argentina below them. One of the bigger crews next, Breed and Moretti. Breed has a great Olympic hopes with gold in the 1,000 and silver in the 500. So that's one to watch. Coming down the list, Germany, Italy, classic Italian name there of Smith. I'm not, <laughs> not sure of his heritage. And then onto the second page, big one to watch here. You've got the, the Hungarians in 520 and 522, um, always good in the junior race. Another Danish crew in 525, Tava and Himvis, unlucky not to make the final at Junior Worlds in the K2000. So they've got some uh, chance to be in the sharp end of this one. Irish have had a great competition so far, and uh, hopefully for them that continues. Cabrera, Railton from Great Britain in 5.30, and then moving down to Millwood and Edmonds. Millwood had a torrid time yesterday. You saw him collapse on the pontoon getting in, so halfway through his race. Apparently he's back up and running this morning, and I'll look forward to seeing him. Congratulations to him for getting up and finishing yesterday in the state he was in. It and wasn't as always, a nice thing to watch, was it? That. Uh, so. And as always, the juniors is quite unpredictable. Yeah, I mean, you, you tend to go with form, don't you? The Hungarians, first and second in the K1 yesterday, have teamed up. They're in the K2 today. So it's, it's hard to look beyond them for a winner. But uh, who stays with them? I mean... One of my favorite races ever was back in Peter Maritzburg when the really young South Africans stayed with the, the big Hungarian K2. And 
I wish I could remember the names off the top of my head, but I, I, that was just fantastic to watch. Yeah. Junior. Danish, Danish crew there getting up. They're hoping for a big one this morning. And their big crew is the Breed and Moretti, I think. Yeah. So starting in about five minutes. Nervous times. It's the Romanians of Kupaz and Stoyan. They'll be closest to us when they line up on the pontoon shortly. You can see the guys wearing hats. Pretty cold out there. That's Breed and Moretti in the grey boat. And exactly the balance we were talking about, the power in the back of that one. And apparently, according to those that know, Moretti is a great driver around these courses. So Definitely worth watching. That was Ture and Halmy in shot there. 520. In the background, Tava and Hinviz from Great Britain in the black boat. So close to being finalists at Junior Worlds in K2000. So they'll all start to gradually drift over to the pontoon, back onto the pontoon. Photo opportunities there for the Irish. You're never far away from an Egan at these events, Stefan. There's always there's always one somewhere. That's all will be in as well. <laughs> That's right. Safety boats getting in position before the start. We've had a few incidents at this one with retirements with injury, Stefan. People coming back on the safety boats. Yeah. The, uh, the Millwood junior from South Africa yesterday, I just did a little bit of asking around. He has no idea what happened. He, he just passed out, essentially, on the landing stage. And uh, seemingly no ill effects this morning. He's racing in K2. But uh, passing out on a landing stage is one thing, Stefan. Passing out when you're out on the water, maybe, maybe slightly more serious. So hopefully there's people keeping an eye on him today. Yeah. 5-2-2 two, two from Hungary. That's the big guns. In the black hats and black gilets. That's Celier and Kolosvari. Kolosvari, we're a bit... A bit reticent yesterday, Stefan, weren't we, in, in saying that he was the uh, the son of Renata Che and Gabor Kolosvari. Renata Che and Gabor Kolosvari, between them, have 3,017 gold medals from these events, I think, Stefan. Yeah, um, or, li or a little bit more. Or, or maybe more. And and that's their offspring. So lining up against that, with the, a genet the genetics he has, is probably a very tough call. Tava and Hinviz in shot there. Fingers crossed for them. I think Tava raced yesterday. I think he'd rather have had a better result than he had yesterday. Good solid performance, though, and he's got a chance today to go one better. So from the bottom of your screen, we're looking at 
Kupaz and Stoyan from Romania. Backing in now, Kadanek and Janiszewski from Poland. And between them at some stage will be Millwood and Edmonds of South Africa. You really don't get a lot of room on these start lines. It's very, very tight and very, very tense. 5-2-1 there. Also from Romania, Tenta and Zahira in the green boat. 5-2-5 is Denmark's Jorgensen and Hinge. In come the South Africans in the blue boat. Few people struggling with uh, numeracy issues there, not knowing where to get in on the line. Argentinians. In the white boat, just backing on now is Cabrera and Railton. Closest to us. Looks like Germans, but they're not on my start list, so I'll get a name check for those later. They're not going to have a holder by the look of it. But being pretty well behaved. Now they're held. South Africans just off the pontoon. And away they go. So nothing in it at the moment. One up from South Africa in the bottom. It's the Poles in the red boat, white shirts. They're first away. Romanians in all sorts of trouble, or Ukrainians may be there in all sorts of trouble with their rudder and their steering. But it's Poland, fourth up from the bottom, who are away fast. That's Kadanek and Janiszewski. There they are, leading Railton and Cabrera on their right. It's a great run up for them. South Africans coming out to the right in the blue boat with Millwood and Edmonds. A great start for Cabrera and Railton. And, whoa, somebody clipped the back of the Polish boat there, and everything's gone. A little bit awry for them. It all comes together. Cabrera coming in from the left-hand side of his screen. Oh, so their day went wrong pretty spectacularly and pretty quickly. Not sure who that is. Can't see the number on my screen. But rescue within 20 seconds of the start. And Poland back in control. Great Britain to their right. Germany to their right. Uh, not the greatest day for them. A big group fans out. It's 5 2 4 that capsized, which was the Norwegians, Lunning, and Hook. So we'll get back to the race as soon as we can, and I'll try and identify people as soon as possible. So look, head on view of them coming up the course. And there's confirmation, Poland still in control as it stands. So Poland, Denmark with Breed and Moretti. 
Itria and Marchetti from Argentina, Cabrera and Railton from Great Britain. A lot of looking around, a lot of talking, often a lot of uh, posturing in junior men's K2. South Africans coming up on the left-hand side. Cabrera holding them off, might be forced to take the lead. South Africans pushing through. They're going right the way through. And I'm sure if Moretti's a good driver, he'll try to cut off the Great Britain team. Great Britain, hold them off. It's Denmark against, and there's, all, there's trouble for the Great British team. Somebody tapped the back of their boat, and they're going to be put back into the melee. But they should fall well for them. They should get the V behind the leader. And although they were hindered there slightly, it's worked out beautifully for Cabrera and Railton. South Africans lead. Cabrera Railton in the V. And that worked out extremely well. It could have ended badly. Germans still there on the outside of the group. Big group still. Very well organized. Slightly chaotic just for that one moment, and then it's all rearranged nicely. Good control. So as they move on, it's South Africans leading Italy, Denmark, Argentina, Germany, South Africa, second South African crew of Simpkins, and Kurtzer, and away go the C2s. C2 men, all the usual suspects in here. And we expect the usual cat and mouse game between the Spanish and the Hungarians as this race unfolds. Paul Gilles, who didn't race yesterday, is in the boat second up there with Zucora, and I feel like Borgil fancies his chances in this one, hence not racing yesterday. There they are in shot. <coughs> Excuse me. So two very different races on the course at the same time. Spaniards there in shot, Sanchez and Granat and the Czechs is going to be Brezina and De Louis. So Borgil, Zucora lead, but that race has yet to settle. Campos back out there again with Romero and Sanchez and Grana. Portuguese there, also with Lacerda and Coelho. There's all sorts of action up at the top. There's a K2, obviously not going in the right direction there. Always strung out around the top turn. And it still looks like it's Millwood Edmonds leading from the Italians, Allen and Duccini. Bride and Moretti up there also. In fact, they could be the lead boat now. Cabrera Railton still in the mix. Itria Marchetti there. Simpkins cuts are there. Hungary and Hungary. We saw Sellier and Colosvari not feature on the first laps yesterday in the K1 but they most certainly featured on the last lap with both of them coming in the top two. So Hungarians, definitely ones to watch. But for now, it's Denmark, Italy, South Africa, Argentina and Great Britain filling those top five spots. Still a sizable group at the front there. Looks to be at least seven in that front group. The 
There are boats wandering around all over the place in the background there. It's clearly a few issues. So Breed and Moretti lead. Favoured by those that know in Denmark. For a good result, Hungarians just making their way back into the back of that group. South Africans in the blue boat tucked in nicely also. South Africans of Millwood and Edmonds, schoolmates from up in Peter Maritzburg and uh, currently buoyed on by the success of their schoolmate from the past, Van der Vesthazen, who just won the Olympics in K2000, all from the same school, the name of which I've forgotten. But hey, I'll get to that in a minute. So a big shout out to... Uh, the Mickle House School in Peter Maritzburg. They're obviously good at producing a canoeist or two. So again, choosing to go quite close to the edge of the lake. Looks like Poland out to the left there. So strong at the start, but perhaps not used to mixing in the groups. A little flurry of excitement at the front. People want to change. South Africans slow to respond there. They've dropped back through the field. They seem to be having a spot of bother, the South Africans there in the blue boat. There's, I think we've got, might have a broken paddle. Yeah. I think, I think in the back of the South, Af something's wrong there. I think yeah. it's a broken paddle in yeah, the South is. African boat. That is desperately unlucky. Especially at this stage of the race where it's now portage coming and it's the wrong place to break a paddle. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, is there a right place? It's uh, that is horribly unlucky. It's not out of the yeah. question. Yeah, they've only got to get back. Yeah, it's a long way to go. I mean, it happened yeah. to to me once in a, in a, a race, and they're a bit unlucky that they're on their own. You can yeah. stay in a group if you're, you know, if it's slow enough like that. But if you can get to somewhere where you can get a paddle, I hope the South African team have been alerted to that already. Hopefully they're watching the live stream and they can see it. But Denmark now, Jorgensen and Hinge have made their way to the front. So we've got two Danes there. The South Africans of Simpkins and Kurtzer who have their full complement of paddles. They're still there. The Argentinians in, Italians, Great Britain still in with Cabrera and Railton. And then the two Hungarians and Germany and the second Argentinian crew. Poland out to the left on their own. So a big, big group, South African crew, Millwood and Edmonds falling back pretty rapidly, as you'd expect, with only one and a half paddles. And they're going to have to get back to the start where they can have a swap over. So Denmark, Denmark and South Africa, front three. Cabrera, Railton doing a great job in that lead V. Germans, Hennies and Wurtmann on the outside of the group. Back of the group there, the Italians, or <clears throat> Argentinians, I think, sorry. And there's the Poles on their own, just coming down the center of the course. Around the top turn, Go the C2s, and we already have a break in that. And the breakaway boat is Borgil and Zucora. Borgil most definitely has seen this as their big opportunity this year. And it looks like his gamble of not racing the C1 yesterday is paying off. Behind them, Brezina and Delui, Kova and Horvath, Lacerda and Coilo. Campos and Romero. So big names behind them, but for now, it's Poland. <clears throat> it's all closing up again. But South Africa in the K2. Simpkins leading.
You always know when junior boys fancy their chances, they have their cap on backwards, Stefan. This is old school wearing it forwards, 5-3-2. That's why they're not at the front, presumably. That's Ukraine there. And here we come. Things getting more and more tense. There's the big guns, Kolosvari and Selye. But for now, South Africa lead. Simpkins doing a great job. Denmark, Italy, either side. Tucked in the back. Denmark. Just behind them, Argentina in the black boat. Groups getting strung out now, but you still got the two Hungarians at the back, so you know that they'll be coming through at some stage. There's always a safety net if you look back. Well, not always, but you hope there is. Argentina and Poland together. Second Great Britain crew of Tava and Hindley's. And it looks very much like the South Africans have a paddle. And they are in that second group in the blue boat. First group, though, seemingly pretty settled. Germans and South Africans. The South Africans are going to go to the front. You need to go with them. You need to go with those South Africans. You can't let them go. They're on a mission. Got to get across to them. But Britain have got to duck round the back there, and they're going for it now. Tava and Hinvis. Getting that potential lift back to the front group. Or not. Germans have cut them off, gone to the other side. Here is the front group, though, and still South Africa lead. Denmark now either side with Italy tucked in the back. Cabrera, Railton, a little bit lost, ducked into the next V, superbly done. Great job by Cabrera today. Argentina on the outside. Irish there think on their own quite a way down maybe they've had an incident or two to so Denmark Denmark look to be the dangerous crews at the moment South Africans drop back they'll fall back into the V it's not going to be made easy for them though Argentinians don't want to drop back and here they come Big guns now to the right of the Danes. So Denmark, Denmark and Hungary. What do you think, Stefan? The Hungarians there, Selye and Kolosvari, they were both really quite invisible or, or poor, if you like, on the first lap yesterday. They didn't feature and now the same today. They've only yeah. just made it into the sort of top top four, top five there. So it's uh, is that a plan or are they just really bad at that first lap? It's hard to know. But uh, considering yesterday they were very strong in the in the end. They, yeah, I mean they were awesome by yeah. the end, weren't they? They yeah. paddled away and yeah. You see the same K2 is another story, of course, but um, yeah, it's a very different story riding the waves in the K2. It's yeah. uh, a good driver is worth an awful lot to you in in a K2 race. The waves are big. Yeah, you can you can play a lot more. There's a lot more leeway in K2. Yeah. Poles still out to the right of the group on their own. They just don't look comfortable every time they get back in contact. It goes wrong for them again. You can see 
see the guys here who are so used to being in these groups. They look relaxed. They look calm. Yeah. And out to the right there, we can't see them at the moment. The poles are in all sorts of problems. Dane's just looking over to see where the poles are. They'll be a bit confused when they... The, the boat going up the middle, you think, right, what, what are they doing? They shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't add up. But they're bringing... There's the South Africans. You knew that train was going to make it to the front. And it's... Uh, not sure who that is on the far side there. Sorry, SR incompetence. I think it's the Germans, Hennies and Vortman yeah. out to the side there. There's the poles that we've been talking about. And back to the C2s. So Borgil and Zucora being led or leading out from... Well, oh, everyone's back in the game, aren't they? Spaniards there is Campos and Romero. The Hungarians, Koba and Horvath. And the Portuguese, Lacerda and Coilo. Five, five, one. Brazina and De Luis, they're about. 80 meters back and currently on their own. Sanchez and Grana, nowhere at the moment, along with uh, Lenikov and Alimov from Russia. They're way back. So it's these four and these four only. And Borgil and Zukora. Ooh. Rudder issues for the Romanians. In the boys' K2. That's going to be Tenta and Zahiria to Louis in the C2 there. And round the back of the C2 race. That was uh, Russians, I think. So Kova and Horvath. That's Sanchez and Granat there on their own. De Louis and Brezina. Brezina yesterday had a great day out. Got his medal. And to their left, 544. His Shpak and Zakharov of Ukraine. Romanians days over. And here's the leaders. <coughs> Campos and Romero. Kova and Horvath. And the Poles, Borgil and Zucora. Somewhere there, also a Lacerda and Coelho. Maybe just out of shot on the left of the picture. Spain, Hungary, and Poland. Portugal still there. There's the bow of their boat. Confusingly using an Italian boat. But we're on to them. So four boats in the men's C2. And that looks like it will be a slow burn in that race over the next few laps. Back to junior men's. So still up the front end, South Africa. And it looks like the second South African crew are back 
in the game. That is awesome. Uh, Millwood this weekend, he had his incident of fainting on the pontoon, got back in and finished his K1. Now he's had the paddle break in the K2 and they're back in that group. You, you don't get better than that, Stefan. That's great. Amazingly strong mindset. You just don't give up. Man of the match so far. It's always this stage of the weekend, Stefan, where our throat starts to go. I'm just struggling here. <laughs> Taking a drink. <laughs> We've got a front group of three, six, nine, ten. That 10 are Simpkins and Coetzer from South Africa, the Germans, Hennies and Bortman, Denmark with Bride and Moretti, South Africa, Millwood and Edmonds, Hungary with Selye and Kolosvari, Argentina, Itria, Marchetti, um, the other Hungarians, Tere and Halmi, um, Alan and Dushini from Italy, and Cabrera, Railton from Great Britain. Good, solid group. Round the outside come somebody, I think it was the second South African crew, leading Simpkins and Coetzer. Their prediction was second group somewhere having a fun day out. So they're doing way better than predicted. The blue boat of South Africa have made not only their way back to the group, but they are solidly into that group. South Africans love taking people on a uh, tour of the local fauna and flora down the edge of the regatta course. And to the far right of shot there, I think it's the Hungarians that are closest to the edge. So some great racing there. The Romanians we saw back at the landing stage fixing their boat are actually back up and running. Through come Denmark, I think that is. Bride and Moretti take the lead. Poland still on their own out the back of that group. Somebody's just dropped off the back of the lead group. Um, try and work out who that is. I think that's Hennies and Bortman of Germany. have just lost contact with that lead pack of nine boats now. So we're coming around to the first portage. Simpkins still looking good. Denmark and Denmark at the front of the race. A very successful event so far for the Danes. We have seen that coming over the years, better and better. Denmark had to, two decades ago or so were one of the great marathon um, countries, and uh, they are back, definitely back, and in time for their own world championships coming up in two years which is quite important for a country that hosts uh, such an event to have good good athletes as well. Absolutely. In, yeah, I mean, we can talk about the Danish history in, well, in marathon for a long time. They've got really some of the big, yeah. big names. The Germans there just off the pace. It's lots of action at the front. It's the Danes doing the damage, but it was the Argentinians that came through the pack and that's what stirred this up. But Denmark now laying down the law. It's Denmark and Denmark. Hungarians coming around the left-hand side of the Danes. They've squeezed out the, um, oh, not sure who they were. Squeezed somebody out into the V. Could be the South African crew of Simpkins. Second South African crew, Millwood there. And Hungarians off the back for now. 
Not the big guns, though. That's their second crew of Terry and Halmy. Denmark lead. To their left, Selier and Kolos Bari. Bride and Moretti from Jorgensen and Hinge. That's the second Hungarian crew, 520, Terai and Halmi, and they appear to be struggling. South Africans, awesome. Millwood and Edmonds back in that group. They're just on the tail there, second from the back, only the Hungarians behind them. But they caught up that group so quickly, Stefan, from they did. Being three, three groups back and... You know the South Africans will portage well, so pretty safe, I would think, being in this group after the turn. After the turn, the portage. Ooh, Cabrera and Railton just dangling off the back of the group. Group, I think, will split at this portage, and they want to be a little bit further up than that if they can. Oh, the Danes dropped That's their the Danes, boats. Yeah. Yeah. That looks very much as close call on the rudder there for the Italians. You can drag it so far, but ultimately, got to get the back out of the water. So leading, Bride and uh, Jorgensen and Hinge, sorry, it was Bride and Moretti in the grey boat who just dropped their boat back in the water. A little look over the shoulder. So how cool is that? Simpkin, Simpkins cuts her second. Yeah, the South African crew, Hungarians through. Great Britain looking a bit laboured on the run. Away go the leaders, and that is a big gap between now and putting your boat in. Great Britain are going to lose touch with that front group here, which is a little bit unfortunate for them. Here come the poles. What you do know is that the poles will be pressing on if you need a lift anywhere. Argentina 2 coming through with Poland. That's Garcia and Salinas. Meanwhile, up at the front, group reforms. Denmark, South Africa, Denmark, Hungary, South Africa. And then a little bit gap to Italy and Argentina. Cabrera, Railton on their own out there now. You're going to have to find something. South Africans come through. Simpkins. Denmark. Two and three. Serlier and Kolosvari in the black hats just behind them. But looking good for South Africa so far. Four boats, five, six, six in that front group. Then a gap back to the Argentinians. Only a small gap, though. Running through the portage now. I think it's Ukraine. Maybe. Another... Rudder issue there for one of the K2s. Retirement. Back to the C2. Four boats still, and it's going to stay as four, I think, for quite a while. We've got Spain, Hungary, Poland, and Portugal. Campos and Romero for Spain, Kova and Horvath for Hungary, Borgil and Zukora for Poland, and Lacerda and Coelho for Portugal. Spain lead. Just missed who that was. It could have been the German crew in the K2 pulling into the side. Um, 
try and give you updates on that. Gutzel and Kraus maybe from Germany. Yep, I think that's who who that was. So C2 marches on, coming into their first portage. C2s have six portages this morning, and the K2s just the five. Campos and Romero in control as it stands. Kova and Horvath to their right, and that's Ukraine, Spain two, and Russia. That's Shpak and Zakharov of Ukraine, Sanchez and Grana from Spain, and Elenikov and Alimov from Russia. They're currently fourth, fifth, and sixth. No, they're not. They're fifth, sixth, and seventh. So Germans that we saw pulling into the side of the lake, they're back out now. That'll be a rudder issue. The C2s coming round the bottom turn and into their first portage. Spain taking the initiative. Campos and Romero. Campos had a torrid weekend so far, and surely he can get something out of this one. Two races so far, no medals, which is unheard of. Yeah, his campus is usually um, winning medals, all events, one of the big, big shots for the C category, both in C1 and C2. It's the Portuguese, we're just off the pace here, Acerda and Coelho. Poland also struggling to coordinate, getting the boat out of the water. See there, over-enthusiasm from the guy in the back. He picked the back out first before the front man had hold of it. And nice little step over, though. They intend to put the boat in on the right-hand side of the pontoon at the exit, having got out on the left. Nice and tidy. Drinks over the head, makes sense. Shoving your hand down their throat doesn't. So news on the Germans that had re-entered the race after pulling into the side. They've now stopped again, and it looks like their boat is broken and their day is over. So bad news for Germany in the junior men's K2. Ukraine, Spain, and Russia come in for the portage. Ukraine out first. Spain's boat, another serial medalist in that one with Granat or Sanchez as well. I mean, Sanchez and Granat, but maybe the gap of two years hasn't served them as well as it has some of the others. Elenikov and Alimov in the background there in red, struggling to keep up on the portage. Ukrainian Shpak and Zakharov leading these three. That's Brezina and Delui. Brezina, no medals for him today. Yeah. 
There's the medals. Kova and Horvath leading from Campos, Romero, Borgil and Zucora. Portugal haven't made contact with that group since the portage and now 40 metres off the pace. So it looks like the medals will come from Hungary, Spain and Poland. That's the portage times there for the men's C2. Portage takes roughly, you can see there, one minute. It's amazing that in that one minute, you can lose an awful lot of time. Denmark still dominating the junior boys K2 race on the far side while the C2s go up towards their second or third long lap rather. Hungary, Spain, Poland with Portugal just trailing them by about 50 meters now. There's the gap between three lead C2s and Portugal opened up on the turn just before the portage. And it looks like Portugal's day in the front group may be over. K2s going back down the other side. Big group of K2s still. Be fun to get back and see what's happening in that group. Looks like Potentially, on the stats, there's a bit of a break in that group. Could have eight boats still, but some seem to be trailing off the pace just a little. A little bit unplanned chain. Oh, they're all together still. Yeah. Looking good. Another great race here, and it's Millwood has not only got back to the group, he's now leading this group. It's good quality. It it's, is good uh, quality. Yeah, there's, the speed is quite high, and they are still eight uh, in this group. We've been fortunate to have so many races like that this yeah. weekend, Stefan. Yeah. It's, it's getting better and better, also in these categories where it previously was not this high quality, even if it was has always been good. Uh, yeah. It, it improves. So the Hungarians being squeezed into the V by the Danes there. So big Hungarian crew in the black hats directly behind the leaders who are Millwood and Edmonds. Breed and Moretti in the grey boat were the ones who moved up and squeezed the Hungarians back. Other Danes in the green boat on the far side. So South Africa, South Africa, Denmark, Denmark, Hungary, um, with the other boats in that group being Argentina, Italy. That's it, Argentina and Italy. So coming up for Portage 2. Small errors on the first Portage for Breed and Moretti. Other than that, everyone else got through fairly cleanly.
Hungarians in the black gilets there looking very, very relaxed in the V-Wash. Unlike their mates who have been at the back of the group, they were at the back of the group this time on the last lap. They're at the back of the group now and just look uncomfortable in this group situation. South Africans not so, though. Both up the front, there's two blue boats and then the two boats of Denmark, Hungary, Argentina, Italy, and just out of shot, Hungarians to the right of your picture look to be struggling. There's the Italians. South Africans pick up the pace to go around the turn. Hungary struggling at the back of that group. So South Africa, South Africa, Denmark, Denmark. Hungarian boat struggling to get round the turn with them. South Africans come left, the Danes go right. Denmark two come left behind the South Africans. The South Africans out and away and they've got a fair gap. South Africa one, South Africa two, Denmark three. Hungarians fourth. There to the left of your shot. South Africans, Simpkins goes through the portage, gets fed. Hungarians get their drink. Danes get theirs. So about half of them went in this time. You can see that little gap that's opened up. I think it's the Italians struggling. That's Denmark with Jorgensen and Hinge in the green boat. Italians just getting in on the left. Hungarians at the back of that group with the Argentinians, and they're going to struggle now to get back in contact. Away go South Africa, one and two. Denmark, three. Hungary, four. Hungarians move out to the right to close down the South Africans, take the Danes with them. Group in shot there. It's France, Great Britain, Ukraine. We're back to the leaders. Millwood telling Simpkins it's his turn. Out to the right, the Italians trying to close down the gap. That's Allen and Duchini. Working hard out there, and they're quite a long way back. The Africans seem to be dictating the pace at the moment. South Africa, that was uh, quite disappointed after the Worlds in 2019 in China. Um, it was a lot of debate on on the shifting generations uh, and all that kind of stuff, and they were really eager to, to do well at this event. And uh, this coming generation seems really, really good. Tava Himbis, Great Britain there, along with the French, Spanish crew, Two Spaniards, French and Great Britain. So that's Tava Himbis, Nadov and Breda. Amos Tegi and Miranda and Haskoy and Didier. They're about 500 metres off the pace at the moment. Poles, as they have been most of the way on their own somewhere in no man's land. Yeah, about 250 meters from the lead. Strong crew, but perhaps not the most race savvy. Bad news for the Germans. They're pulled into the side. If there's an ambulance now assisting them. So that looks like not a boat failure after all. It looks like sickness of some sort so hopefully they're okay we'll give you those details as we find them out 
So lead groups very much calm down now. We're down to six boats. And that's South Africa, two boats, Denmark, two boats, Hungary, two boats. And the Italians made a pretty brave catch up. Very impressed with them. Three nations with great um, heritage on the uh, K2 uh, paddling, South Africa, Denmark and Hungary. South Africa, these youngsters, is the new coming generation replacing the very strong generation that we have seen over the years with the paddlers like Hank McGregor, Andy Burke, Jasper Mocke, and Scott Cameron Schumann, all of them winning gold medals in men K2. So it like, seems like yeah. this great nation is um, canoe, canoe Marathon Nation is producing once again new good paddlers. C2s, no real developments. Looking at Hungary, Spain, and Poland, and it will stay like that for yeah. a long time. I think. Martin, Martin Kober, uh, he was in a winning crew together with Adam Dotsche and won 14, 15, 16 and 17. Uh, C2 gold medal. Um, Spain has also quite a heritage on this with Ma Manuel Campos. I, I think he had a silver back in 2014 um, and a bronze in 2015 then with Sanchez. And Diego Romero, Romero has a gold 2018 with Oscar Grana. Who's in the second Spanish boat today. Yeah. They're not having such a great day of it today. Oscar and Grana about a minute off the pace at the moment. Back there they are. Here's the leaders, Kova and Horvath. So they're coming down for the second of their portages. Six to do today. This is number two. Portuguese, Coelho and Lacerda on their own in fourth place. Gap now 120 meters between this, the first group, and the Portuguese, and the gap is widening. Poles using the Spanish boat to help them get round that turn. And away they come. Cover coming to the right of the landing stage. The Spaniards going left. Poles seem to be a little bit more scrappy getting out of the boat than the other two. But they'll run well and they'll all get in together. All three boats together. No intent to break this group up at all there. Just a journey for these guys at this stage of the race. Russians there with Elenikov and Alimov. Well off the pace, almost 400 meters behind the leaders. Portuguese just 120, 130 meters back, but that gap's widening.
Ukraine, Spain, Spack, Zakharov, Sanchez, and Grana. Only about 40 seconds or so down on the Portuguese. And also the 26 uh, years we have had the C2 men, uh, Hungary have won 16. 16 out of 26, and the rest, uh, 10. Uh, Spain uh, was was uh, victorious in five, Great Britain in three, and Denmark in two. So uh, <laughs> that was a, a, a great era. The, the Denmark and Great Britain C2 with uh, Nilsson Fredriksson and the Train yeah. Brothers, exactly. uh, very much well matched, and there was a good races always between those yeah. groups. Hungary took over in 1999 and uh, won every uh, year until 2009. And then uh, Spain came in and then it has been Spain and Hungary all the way through. Back with the junior boys, K2, South Africa at either end of that group, front and back. Denmark in there still, Argentina in there still. Two Hungarian crews. South Africans in blue at the back, Millwood and Edmonds. Just looking like they're picking up the pieces at the moment. But it's quite slow. You can tell by the shape of the group, it's a bit confused, a bit bunched up. Nobody really knows who's going to lead next. It looks like the Danes are going to go with Breed and Moretti. So Breed and Moretti take the lead. And again, just like in the C2, it's just a bit of a journey covering some ground at this stage. Not much going on. Itria Marchetti of Argentina. Argentinians putting more and more good people out there, Stefan. Yeah. <clears throat> we have seen them for 10 years or so. Yeah. Now and then go producing good results, uh, but now it seems like they are joining uh, as one of the accountable, really good uh, marathon nations. So I wonder when they will organize uh, an event in yeah. Argentina. It's time. And then, then they should most definitely invite us out, Stefan, to work sure. on site. Absolutely. I quite fancy a trip to Argentina. So Moretti oh. leads. Hungarians to his right. Argentina also has uh, good paddling conditions. Through come the second Danes. Yeah. A lot of positioning going on for the next portage. Here come the Hungarians. Yeah. A burst through to hold off. The Danes on their right hand side. They didn't want to be closed into the back for that portage. Moretti leads. Hungary still pressing. Forcing the pace. South Africans, Simpkins try and force through on the Italians. Italians say no. Still movement on the outside of the group, though. The Danes in the green boat forced to drop back. And Hungarians, as they have been on each one of these laps, dangling at the back <coughs> of the group. Denmark lead, Italy to their left. That's the German crew there, not in that front pack. Chase group there with Cabrera and Railton in Great Britain. Germans of Hennies and Vortman. But this is the lead and the Hungarians are going for it this time. Hennies and Vortman there. Trying to chase, but the power isn't in this group. Second, Argentinians with that group, Garcia and Salinas. Down comes Simpkins. 
Simpkins to the right of the Hungarians who lead this group. Millwood at the back of that group now looks to be struggling. They've had a tough morning of it. They're with the Hungarians, though, and the Hungarians have caught up after the previous two portages. So if Millwood can keep in contact with that Hungarian crew, there's still a lifeline. But at the moment, it's the big guns have made their way to the front. First and second yesterday, as they are in the K2 there, Selye and Kolosvari. Simpkins to their right, Moretti to their left, Argentinians tucked in the back, Italians on the left again. Second Danish crew there of Jorgensen and Hinge. That's the front group as it stands. Hungary just off the back with Millwood and Edmonds. Terry and Halmi, the Hungarians there, not quite making it into the group on each one of the bottom turns. Second group led by Hennies and Wartman. Round the turn. Moretti struggling on the inside. Going to get pushed out now. There's problems there for him. Not too bad, though. Takes the Argentinians with him. Italy come around on the inside. Hungary and South Africa looking a little bit detached from this group now. We know Simpkins runs well. Hungarians, the right-hand side of the pontoon. They're going to be, well, a bit slow getting out. Celier missed the front cockpit of his boat. Little glance back to South Africa. They find themselves with quite a gap. Back to Hungary, then Denmark, Argentina. Denmark coming through for a drink change. South Africa still relaxed. Control of the run. Hungary right on their tail. Little gap back to Italy. Denmark and Argentina. That's your first five. South Africa away first. Hungary second. Denmark third away. Great get in from the Danes. Italians slow to leave the landing stage. Far side, the group with the French, Great Britain, and Spain. South Africa lead, Hungary looking over their shoulders, trying to see their teammates, I think. Italians struggling on the outside of the group again. Bit of a catch up for them. Argentina in blue. Hungary move out now to the left side of the South Africans. Argentina outside them, Italy outside them. There's plenty of big waves tucked in the group behind. Hungary come swap sides, come to the right of the South Africans. Argentina take the opportunity to move up. Leaves a V open for someone. And it's the Danes that take that. Hungary irritating the Danes a little bit there, dropping back onto the half V. Whether that's on purpose or whether they're struggling, the Hungarians seem to be struggling for directional yeah. control at the moment. Yeah. They don't seem to be able to steer very well. Spain, Spain, Great Britain and France come round the bottom turn. About 600 metres off the pace as we stand. Ukraine in the boat at the back of that group now. A little bit lost as to who we're looking at there. I think that is the lead group. Yeah. It is the lead group we were looking at there. Sorry, I let you down on the commentary there. So Spain... Two Spanish crews lead the French and Great Britain through portage number th three.
Ukraine just at the back of that group with Kishniak and Klopov. So 5-2-1 from Romania, we saw having trouble early on, have now been lapped, so they'll be called in and have to do their short lap whenever these boys have finished. The South Africa lead again with Simpkins, Hungarian Selye and Kolosvari seem to have tr be having trouble steering at the moment. Italy tucked in the back. Argentina there having a little flail around the outside. Trying to get somewhere more comfortable in the group. Chase group behind with the Germans, Great Britain, and Argentina and Poland. So front group now, South Africa, Argentina, Denmark, Denmark, Italy, Hungary, and second Hungarian crew some 50 meters off the pace. So we're down to six with one chase boat. Millwood and Edmonds falling back another 40 meters or so on the Hungarians. And it looks like the work they put in, well, that could be the two of them there together now, actually, hopefully. They'll work together and keep in touch with that front group. The front group is now six boats. South Africa, Argentina, Denmark, Denmark, Italy, and Hungary. So three portages from five done. And the C2 stays well together, as expected. Just transportation for them. It's always such a psychological game, that C2 race. They all know yeah. each other so well. They've raced each other a thousand times in the past. And it's kind of just a gradual psychological war of attrition, isn't it? It's uh, Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, two juniors heading up for the turn. Round they go. Reed and Moretti leading round the turn from Itria and Marchetti of Argentina, Simpkins and Kutzer of South Africa. Six boats in the group, slightly uncomfortable. see the nice tidy group of four at the front and then there's two boats have to keep picking up what's left once that group of four is formed here's the lead c2s though spain out first it's been poland every time they've been a bit scrappy getting their boat out the water but not so this time
with Spain, Hungary and Poland all going through Portage 3 together. And I'm sure they will leave together as well. Poles come in for a drink change. Campos looks uh, strong today. At this uh, stage of the race yesterday, he was not that comfortable. Absolutely, I think probably the pace is a little bit lower today. The waves are bigger on a double as well. The wash hangs yeah. just that little bit, gives you that little bit more. Away you go Poland, away you go Spain, and now Hungary. I'm sure they'll all be together in no time. Portuguese haven't given up the chase. Coelho still running well. With his partner, Rui Lacerda. K2, group of six, goes on. Nobody really wanting to take the lead. You see three boats pretty much straight across the front. That means that uh, the speed is not that high. Argentinians out to the left of the group. Just about to turn it on now. They want to squeeze into the front four. <coughs> Hungary leading. They haven't done that so much during up to now. But everyone needs to do their, their are share. They, are they leading unbelievably slowly so their teammates yeah. can catch up, Stefan? I think <laughs> I think that's what's happening yeah. here. Yeah. They were looking over their shoulder after the portage to see where their mates were. And now, you know, that, that's just... Here's, here come the second Hungarians yeah. now. I think that boat in the foreground is the lapped boat of the Romanians. Yeah. So they're not in the race. Bottom of your shot there. But the Hungarian... Second crew are just about to rejoin the lead pack. And I think that was a bit of teamwork there. We're Easily getting to the sharp avoided. end now of this race. Yeah. Two portages to go. And actually, it's very hard to pick out. Well, I mean... This could be a massive group, couldn't it? Yeah. They're just about 50 meters behind is this second group. And is with one lap to go, that's going to confuse things a lot if that group blend with the front group. Front group going really slow. You see, like, when they yeah. get within striking distance in that second group, someone makes a run for it, and that destroys the second group. Somebody will make it. Somebody won't make it. And leading that second group at the moment is the Germans, I think, of Hennes and Wilkman. You can see that second group. No, it's Cabrera and Railton leading the charge to get back to the first group. It's a high risk leading that last bit back to the group because when you get there, others can overtake you and take the washes that you want. There go the Germans now. Massively stressful doing these catch-ups. Argentina on the far side. The second South Africans there. Millwood back in the game. And the Poles, who we know... Won't be taking any washes when they get there. So, it looks like... Well, I don't know what it looks like. It's... Uh, looks like it's going to be a very big group. Very big to the next uh, yeah. portage.
They're not quite there yet, though, that second group. It's, oh. still, it's still two distinct groups, about 35 metres between the two groups. I think somebody in the front group, when they get closer to the turn, will be motivated enough to drive the speed up. Yeah. And the portage, the portage is a strange one then, isn't it, Stefan? Because whoever gets out last in that front group and whoever gets out first in the second yeah. group, all of a sudden the groups blend there. Yep. Here we go. So, Denmark from Hungary. The Danes look stronger than the Hungarians there. Hungary again on the outside in the white boat. They don't seem to be able to mix in the group. South Africa in the blue boat. Action because the Italians have just tapped the back of the green boat. The Danes, the Italians are off the group now. They wanted to come outside the group, but instead yeah. made contact with the Danes. And that's just a little bit of stress. Didn't drop back far enough. So now it's Hungary, one and two. Yeah. Denmark on the left. Seems like they have a good team tactic there. Want to have the lead into the, this turn. Italians back in the group at the back. It's the Danes that are struggling now. Yeah. Hungary perfectly positioned. Just perfect. Hungary smooth at the front. Denmark trying to come around on their inside. Hungary say no. Not leaving too much room on the inside, but enough for the Danes to get round. Danes choose to drop to the half V. So Hungary, one, two. Denmark, three. Then Argentina, then South Africa, then Hungary, and Denmark, two, at the back. Through come the Hungarians. One left, one right. No, both right. Well done to the Argentinians. They've seen an opportunity. They've come to the left of the pontoon, and it's going to work out well for them. It's South Africa that are struggling a little bit here. Simpkins, first time he hasn't been out in the first three or four. Luckily, Danes in the great boat. Slight error there, but Hungary too, all of a sudden back in the picture. Argentina were awesome on that portage. They're coming in, maybe through the drink claim, maybe not. No, just trying to overlap the Hungarians who are coming in. So, Argentina, Hungary and Hungary. South Africa four. Italians struggling, and at the back, it looks like the Great Britain team first from the second group, and they may get an overlap. Italians, if they're lucky. Is Hungary out first? Hungary, South Africa, both Hungarians saw that. Well. Yeah. Cabrera, Railton may just make contact with the back of that group. Poland, bizarre carrying method there, but they're still doing it. And away they go. Romanians, these are the lapped crew. Boat problems early on. And there goes that front group. Six, seven boats. And I think the Italians suffered in that. They're 17, 18 metres back off the pace. So front group, Argentina, Hungary, Denmark, Hungary, Denmark, and South Africa. Italians are back there. And the second Argentinian crew and Great Britain there together. That's Garcia, Salinas, Cabrera, and Railton are so, so close to regain in contact with the group. But you know what that feels like, Stefan. Yeah. It's close and so far away. Yeah. Just at the absolute will of this first group. If they want, if they don't mind you coming back, you might get there. But if they decide they don't want you there, you can do all the work you like and someone will turn up the pace in the front group just when you don't need it. The Italians are the back of the first group. Also, and it's close uh, now. There's the Argentinians, Great Britain, hanging in there with them. It's tight for these boys. Back to the portage. Spaniards, French. Ukrainians there. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm on the wrong group. I'll back.
back to the leaders. That's easier for me. Two Hungarians in shot. And this serves the Argentinians in Great Britain well. Nobody wanted to take the lead on. Denmark, Denmark, Hungary, Hungary. It was an interesting team tactic from the Hungarian team uh, over the <clears throat> previous lap. I mean, um, the first uh, Hungarian slowed down and let uh, the second Hungarian boat join the group again. And then they they went to, together uh, around the, the um, turn before the portage and, and the portage was uh, tremendously su successful. Um, it, it's good team tactics. And I, know, I mean, Koloshvari might have grown up discussing marathon tactics in yeah. during his entire life. His mother had been racing K2s for 20, 21 consecutive years. So, and we will see her later on uh, today. And that's also quite unusual to have um, two family members uh, in the same world championships, uh, mother and son. Quite unusual, I imagine. I imagine yeah. it's the first. So it looks yeah. like the Argentinians made the jump to that group. Great Britain are in all sorts of trouble out the back there. Cabrera in the front of that boat, putting his paddles down, and he's waiting for the next crew. The chase was too hard for them, but now we've got two Argentinians side by side, this side of the group. Far side of the group goes Sellier and Colos Vari. Leading is... Mar Moretti and, and Breda. Yeah. Breda. South African Simpkins still sitting nicely in the back of that group. Comfortable. And the uh, French called it a day. That's five. 12 from France, Pascoe and Didier. Their day's over. They had a tough day yesterday in the K1 also. And we're looking at eight boats now. Final lap, final big lap for junior men's K2. Out to the yeah. left. Chase still goes on. I think that's Hennies and Vortman, Railton and Cabrera. And in this uh, very strong uh, Danish K2, Maretti and Breda, uh, just got uh, a message from uh, René Vesper Larsen. Thank you for that, uh, René. Uh, that um, Nikolai Breda is the son of Sten Breda that used to race. Um, international marathons in in the 80s and 90s so it's all all family business also there and he is he is from uh, the danish club hellerup while Maretti and Hin, hinge is from silkeborg silkeborg that is organizing next year's european championships c2s as we left them a while ago, Borgil and Zucora lead from Campos, Romero, Kova and Horvath. 200 meters plus now back to Coelho and Lacerda. In shot now, Portuguese. Coming around for their fourth portage. Lap times just gradually increasing. Junior boys K2. Round the top turn. It looks like the Germans and Great Britain have made that group now. Yeah. Just at the back. German solid needs. effort to catch up.
But now, pace goes up. They're strung out. It's Hungary in the lead. That is Increase. a serious change of yeah. pace. No change of pace down this end of the course, though. Consistent. Rhythmic. Just covering the ground. The gap's opening up, up in the junior K2. Looks like Cellier and Colosvari, the ones trying to do the damage. Brida Moretti, or Brida and Moretti, rather, go with them. A little gap back to the Italians. And then a gap opened up between them. Simpkins and Kurtzer also in that front group of four. And then a little gap opened up. But back to the C2s. Poland, this time out first. That's the first time we've seen them exit the water first. So it looks like a group of six in the K2 leading. Um, it's a C2. And a lapped K2 maybe in front of them. So as the C2s run through the portage, fairly uneventfully, we've got a break of six in that front of the K2, which is South Africa, Denmark, Hungary, the two Argentinians and the Italians. We've lost Jorgensen and Hinge from that group. Second, Danish K2 in green. But could reform. You've still got three boats chasing. And the three boats chasing seven, eight, and nine is the, are the Germans, the Hungarians, and Great Britain. Germans doing a lot of the work in that group now. Denmark just dangling off the back. That green boat there. Got to get in terms. It's the Germans looking really strong in that second group. That's the second catch-up they've done. They've taken Great Britain with them both times. Argentinians duck round the back, come up the right-hand side of the group. Ukrainians out by the look of it. Nikolai Chuk and Duchenko. Few retirements today. And the group is back together, all except Green Boat of Denmark. Boating with the yellow sleeves at the back of the group. They've been lapped. No one's going to thank them for taking a wash that could be theirs. C2s out of the portage and away. At the moment, the Hungarians just off the pace. So K2 group back to nine boats. Great Britain, Argentina, Hungary, Italy, Hungary, Argentina 2, Germany, South Africa and Denmark. Nine boats for the final uh, portage. Final portage. It's going to be stressful. It's, yeah. Especially if those Romanians are still in there. They've been lapped on go Denmark now. I think we'll see some Around high the outside, speed. Hungary too. Yeah. It's going to get very tense now. Yeah. Argentina hold off Hungary too. This is good racing. Another boat just about to fall out the back of that group. As the speed picks up, Denmark, Hungary, Germany really putting themselves in the mix on the far side of this group now. That's the blue nose you can see there. Hungary, either side of the leaders. Germans move up. Italy still there, Argentina in the blue hats, Great Britain, 
Cabrera and Railton, awesome job just at the back of the group. Argentina two on the far side. Coming through one of the C2s. Hopefully C2 will turn out of the way. Hungary looking comfortable. Yeah, Simpkins very. trying to push up into a wash that probably isn't his right now. Speed and the tension just build and build. This is the final portage, just one small lap to go. Poland somewhere further back with Millwood. Really need to be with that front group now if we can. Because the excitement is going to build. There go Sellier and Kolos Vary. Italy go with them. On the far side, Denmark. The other Hungarian crew dropping back rapidly. Simpkin still in there. Group strung out now and it's Sellier doing the damage. Denmark look comfortable on the outside. Italy on the inside. Italians haven't featured too much in this race. Simpkins looking good, good in that fourth place. That group split away now. Argentina just struggling to maintain contact with them. Italians drop back. Simpkins needs to move up. Can't do it right now. Amazing effort from Hungary there. Looked relaxed uh, 500 meters from the turn and now taking the lead. Trying to... Hung Absolutely. Hungary, Denmark, small gap opening up between them and Italy. South Africa with the Italians. Argentina and Great Britain together. And at the back, Germany and Argentina too. Well, that could be the second Hungarian crew, sorry, not the, not Great Britain. Here come the Hungarians, Hungary and Denmark. Hungarians, awkward getting out of the boat, but they're out first. Still not made contact. That is a vulnerable rudder right now. Oh, Simpkins doing well. He's going to come third as it stands. Side the gap between them and the Italians. Come Hungary. So Hungary, Polosvari, Selier, Breeder, and Moretti, Simpkins, and Kutzer. Italians look to be laboring in fourth position. So these three clear. Simpkins, Kutzer on for a medal that I don't think their team thought they were going to get. Hungary away, Denmark away. South Africa. Oh. oh, the South Africans, the medal was in the bag. And they took a swim at the worst possible time. So sad for them. They had it. It was theirs. And now that is a sad, sad sight. That was two boys who were going to have a race of their life. Great Britain getting in on the left of the pontoon. Here's the first two, Hungary and Denmark. Probably have to favour Hungary, but the Danes have been solid. Breeder, good sprint speed in the back of that boat. And this is just awful to watch. Back to the front of the group. Tellier Kolosvari, looking good for a win as it stands. Denmark, tracking them. They can get round the turn first, maybe. Hungary, I'm sure, will cut them tight. Danes struggling. And now the Danes are going to be pushed out, and that will give the Hungarians two, three lengths lead, yeah. and that's going to be more than they need. Italy in third, the Argentina. There go the Hungarians. That gap's wow. going to open now. 
very well done from the Hungarians. They were looking so relaxed into the turn and then just <clears throat> staying cool, keeping the initiative. This is horrible ah. for these boys. Hungary, Denmark, that's sorted. There's a race for bronze, three boats in that race for bronze as they went round that top turn. Hungarians, just too strong. Yeah. Denmark matching them for pace, but Moretti just put his nose outside the tail of the Hungarians on the turn. That was enough to push them out. Two length gap was there, and now that's what's going to stay all the way to the finish. So that a gold for Hungary, Selei and Kolosvári. And another medal for Denmark. The top keep two on. in the medal table and yeah. top two in this race. Great race uh, from the Hungarians. And as well from Denmark, of course. Yeah. I think yeah. it's Argentina in third at the moment. Yeah. With Itria and Marchetti. Italians with them. Across the line go Hungary. Just behind them, Denmark. And I think it's going to be an Argentinian bronze. About 40 metres behind. Just wait. There they go. Argentina from Italy. Great for the Argentinians. And Argentina... Then fifth as well. They're happy with that. And then Hungarians, Germans. Those Germans did a great job over the last two laps. They pulled other crews up to the front group. Nearly made it stick. Just got caught for speed. Through come Denmark. With Jorgensen and Hinge. And then behind them in ninth place. Well, look like the South Africans. There should be Great Britain in there somewhere also. Get confirmation, I'm sure, of those positions. But I think Cabrera and Railton were ninth with Millwood Edmonds here in 10th position. And we just didn't see Cabrera and Railton go over the line. Millwood, just a desperately unlucky weekend for him. I'm sure we'll see more of him. Then Poland, who spent most of the day on their own, led off the start and now finishing in 11th place. Kadanek and Janiszewski finish in 11th. Denmark, happy with their day's work. Second place. And across the line after the poles, I think, is going to be Lunning and Bush of Norway. And then finally, well, not finally, after them, it's going to be Simpkins and Kutzer of South Africa who were nailed on for a bronze medal with just a thousand meters to go. There's the Norwegians, 524, Learning and Butch.
Argentinians in bronze. Great result for them. Tava and Hinvis. Great Britain, 15th position for them. Red cap of Simpkins. Tough day out for him. Great race, though, and he has to take some consolation from that. South Africans were there all the way. Tava and Hinviz just beating the Spanish into 15th place. As the C2s come round, and we're down to two boats. Potentially, the Hungarians never caught up after that last portage. Hungarians some 40 metres off the pace in the C2, with Campos Romero leading and Borgil Zucora in second place. It will be, uh, if, the, if this holds uh, on, it will be the first uh, silver medal in a, in a C2 race for Poland ever. Wow. They had a, yeah, they had a bronze 2011, Kaminski Plowski, but never a silver or a gold. So the Hungarians aren't too far behind. You can see them oh. in shot there. Yeah. Poles struggling to get into the landing stage, but away goes. Spanish, and this could be Campos's redemption after a pretty torrid weekend that he's had. One big lap to go for these guys, and it's Spain from Poland. Hungary not yet up. The yes, SAR there on the run themselves in the background there. Kova and Horvath. Just struggling a little. They lost a bit of ground on the last portage, and it seems like they never closed that down. So Spain, Poland are going to be very motivated now to keep that gap open. Here come the Hungarians. The other two paddle away. They go. Portuguese still sticking to their task. Coelho and Lacerda. and Lacerda about 300 metres down on the leaders. One big lap and one small lap still to come. In the junior K2s, from where we left it, we've now had the Spanish finish. Amos Tegui and Miranda in 17th place. Portuguese still running well. About 250 metres now behind Kova and Horvath from Hungary. Far side, a little bit of action between Spain, Sanchez and Grana, and Spak and Zakharov of Ukraine. Here's the leaders. Orgil and Zukora lead from Campos and Romero. Last journey up to the big top turn. Spaniards just ahead of the Ukrainians coming in to Portage 5. Sanchez and Granat, 350 metres behind the Portuguese who we've just seen come through.
very well coordinated boat emptying from Ukrainians. Portuguese looking up the course to the back of Kova and Horvath, who are now 60 metres behind the lead group. 250 metres the difference between Portugal and Hungary. So a great race, Stefan in the junior men's K2, big group all the way, doubled in size with one lap to go, and then gradually yeah. disintegrated round the last turn, really, pull into the yes. last turn. And yeah, it was a really was great, yeah, really great, great race. I mean, talk about a tough day for the South Africans. You've got Millwood's crew yeah. broke their paddle, did a fantastic job to catch up and get re-established in that front group. And then that last portage with Simpkins, they're just over excitement, maybe, bad luck, maybe, a bit of both. It, it's uh, it's brutal to watch. And it's brut brutal to be there <clears throat> as an athlete as well. But they, they know what they have done. And in the bottom of their heart, they could be a little bit pleased with their, with their race. Abs uh, absolutely, they were third all yeah. the way, weren't they, at yeah. that point? And yeah. The Irish coming through. For their last short lap. Great job from those guys sticking to the task. And that's the view up the course for the men's C2. Spain, Poland, 60 odd meters up. Just finishing in the junior boys K2 there. Ukrainians, Izniak and Klopov. It could have been Ivanov and Stefanov actually of Bulgaria, my mistake. Portuguese, hoping Against hope, probably, that the Hungarians crack and fall back to them. In reality, it's fourth place for, for Portugal. Coelho and Lacerda. Hungarians gradually losing ground on those first two. Gap opening up now to almost 70 metres. 240 now back to Portuguese. 240 metres is a long, long way. With only 3K left, it looks like the positions, third and fourth at least, are set. Yeah, I think Portugal is quite pleased anyway. Uh, they haven't had a medal in this um, C2 category since 2006 when Nuno Barros and Jose Sousa had a bronze medal. So fourth position for this crew is quite good. And if they could continue, they could have a good crew uh, also on the next year's World Championships in it's, it's very in easy, Portugal. Stefan, when we're watching and, and, and pe other people watching, we're, we're lucky enough to be commentating, but you forget that there's different goals for people. Yeah. We tend to get hooked on who's winning, who's going to get yeah. a medal. It, it's very easy to go down that route and think the only successful people are the ones who end up on the podium, and that's just not true. You know, There are races within races here, and uh, there's a lot of winners out there who don't end up standing on a podium. Exactly.
That's Spain and Poland. Last of the long straights for them. Spain have been the quicker out of the boat on the portage so far. Poland a little bit scrappy, and that could be the difference on the last portage. The taller one, on the other hand, uh, seems quite strong on the water, especially when it comes to uh, hard efforts and rapid paddling. And neither raced yesterday yeah as well so they've got that little bit of an advantage perhaps yeah of being slightly fresher Hungar hungarians now keeping that gap to around the 70 meters a little bit Portuguese surprising closing slightly a little bit surprising i thought to uh, cover and horvat uh, should be uh, should close the gap. Spain and Hungary dominating the medal roster all the way since, yeah, for a, more or less a 20 year period. There's the medals in the men's C2. Although having just watched the K2 fall in at the last portage, it's not over till it's over, is it? It's exactly. But this is experienced paddlers, so the risk is a little yeah. bit less. What about the tactics now? I think uh, Spain is the ones that really want to create an advantage for themselves for themselves over the portage. They know the Polish crew could be dangerous to them in the in sprint. They will and you know, you know what, Stefan, the, the Spanish have been up there and had to make winning moves. Yeah. Or, or have experienced winning moves in the past. The, the Polish haven't. Have they? So, they've never they've never been there and and you know how it is the decisions when the decisions are made they have to be made quickly and with a certainty. And the Spanish have made those decisions in the past. They've been on the receiving end of those decisions. The Polish have always yeah, not been at that sharp end at this stage. So that that could be significant also. Absolutely. But they can, on the other hand, win the first gold medal in this ca category ever for for Poland. And that's also an ambition. That would be pretty exciting. Yeah. So a junior K2 going around the short lap turn there. Far enough in front of the C2s not to create any problems. Portuguese still pressing on. Still 250 meters adrift of the Hungarians, though. Working very, very well together, very coordinated.
to Spain, lead Poland as they gradually make their way towards that bottom turn, about 500 meters to go to the bottom turn now. A couple of minutes and that's where it's all gonna kick off. Spain holding the initiative at the moment. Everyone monitoring each other's body language, see what's going to happen and when. The communication between paddlers in each boat. Two hundred meters to go. Spain still in control. Poland alongside. Hungarians just a few meters back, 75 meters back. Campos will be looking at the first turn boy now. Gradually increase the speed. There was no change up to the turn. It's the Spaniards leading around from the poles. Spain just struggling to get around. It gives Poland an opportunity on the inside there just to pull up level. Two boats locked side by side. And here they come. Both boats going to the right of the pontoon. The Spaniards can hold the poles out. It gives them a huge advantage. If the Spaniards get out early now, they've done exactly that, leaving the poles adrift. Oh, Poland, Messi. And it's done. And the race is won. Poles haven't had the time to empty the boat out this time. Drinks are off, but they are running with massive intent, the poles. Spaniards so experienced, they did that absolutely deliberately, held the poles out, went really slowly, got out of their boats slowly. The poles were frustrated. They caught up on the run. I don't think that's going to be enough. I mean, what were their options, Stefan? Did they have any options? No, oh, no. Oh. Could have shoes on the other side, maybe. Really tough call for them. They've done extremely well to be back on the wash after that. Absolutely. But that means they've run really hard, and you know how long it takes to get back to full paddling fitness or full paddling strength after a run like that. Poles will be breathing really hard right now. Spain had a little bit of a break. And you know how the turn will work. Campos will hold them in tight. The two boats will come together again, I'm sure. Portugal still in the hunt. Spain and Poland.
sport you enter the water they look up the course and see the others just about to go round that top turn there they go great work from both boats there they're going to come out of this still locked together and we've got 500 meters now back to the finish Climbing out over a wave isn't easy in the C2s, so they're going to separate. I would, you would think the Poles would want clear water, and there go Poland. Yeah. They're going to separate, and this is going to be an absolute battle. 500 metres side by side. The Spanish need to come over and get the Poles back behind their wave. Poles moving in. Spain from Poland. Poles back on the wave, suggests that the Spanish are traveling faster. Hungary, in, safe in bronze. Poland having trouble with their steering now. Spanish pull away, and it looks like Spain all the way. It does. Just a very well-managed last 1,500 meters by Campos there. Campos Romero ahead of Borgil Zucora. Polish had a go after the turn, but it wasn't enough. And now it's all about Spain. It's all about Spain once again. Spain looking strong all the way to the line. So a successful final for Campos and these championships. That wasn't that good for him in the C1. But C2. World champ once again. Manuel Antonio Campos and Diego Romero. And silver goes to Poland by, by Sushora and Borchiel. And bronze to Hungary. Horvat and cover. Cover over the line. There's gold and silver. Bronze come into picture now. For Bourgil, who didn't race in the C1 yesterday, banked on this as his medal winning run, and it turns out it was the right thing to do. He comes away with a silver medal, Kovac and Horvath with the bronze. Fourth place, Coelho and Lacerda. Coelho and Lacerda across the line. Fourth place for them. Well ahead of the Spaniards, Sanchez and Grana. Well, there's your winner. Rana, Sanchez, Sanchez.
That's a bit of a swap, Stefan. It's usually Sanchez and Romero, isn't it? Granat. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit of a, a trade of trade off of partners. That's actually happened in the men's K2 as well with um, Boros and Salty. Yeah. They're in different K2s late yeah. this afternoon in our final race of the weekend. I mean, these guys uh, switched to, to after the Worlds 2018. 2019, it was Campus Romero. 18. I'm only two years out of date, Stefan. <laughs> 18, it was um, Grana and Romero. Yep. Not their best day today for these two. Fifth place. And well down and just ahead of the Ukrainians, Spak and Zakharov. Zakharov, sorry. Spain across the line. Any minute now, Sanchez and Grana. Ukrainians next. Followed by the Russians, Erlenikov and Alimov. Italians coming over the portage there. They're going to be the next finisher, and that's Ponte Corvo and Quattrocolo of Italy. So about a 1,000 metres to go for them. Romanians, they're currently at the back of the field, Trifon and Baragal. Brazina and Delui didn't finish. Bad day at the office for them. Brazina, though, good day yesterday. He went home with a medal. So not, not everything lost. They had a bronze uh, back in 2018. Brazina and Delui. And how, how do you explain this, Stefan? You've got Hungarians back here, Cilani and Zidai, way off the pace. Yeah. Okay. It's only unusual for Hungary. So they're ahead of the Romanians. The Romanians still have their portage to go. Hungarians have finished their final portage, 1,000 metres to go for them. They're just behind the Italians. So these three boats, the last three left on course. Italians, 500 metres to go. Struggling to get round a turn. What are we looking forward to next, Stefan? It's the K2 women. Yep. And if that's anything like the K1 women's race yesterday, that will be awesome. I think it will. So many very good crews there. And we'll, 
in that race, obviously. The mother of the K2 Junior Boys winner just now will be out hoping to add another medal to her. It's actually her 21st consecutive K2 World Championships. Yeah, today. Winning is 13 of them. 13 out of 20. Not bad, is it? It isn't. I'm really confused by the Hungarian C2 there. They're struggling to go around a corner. Yeah, that's the greatest canoeing nation in the world with 20 plus medals already. Yeah. And their second C2 can't go around a corner? What's happening there? So, while we watch the end of the tail end of the C2 race, Ross Solly is ahead of the game, obviously, and ready to interview our new world champions. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, I'm here with our C2 world champions, Manuel and uh, Diego from Spain. Congratulations, you. Manuel. You must be very happy. Second C2 world title. Yes, it's my second gold medal in Sichu, and Diego three uh, gold medal in Sichu. Yes. Tell me about the race for you. Did it go to plan? Were you comfortable? Uh, yes. Uh, la regata hoy fue según lo planeado, ¿no? Sabíamos que estaban los polacos y y los húngaros muy fuerte. Finalmente fue así, ¿no? Una regata entre tres. Al final nos pudimos escapar con, con los polacos, abrimos un poco de hueco con los húngaros y fuimos colaborando para, para abrir un poco de espacio para jugarnos la, al final entre los polacos y nosotros. Everything happened uh, under the plan. Uh, they, uh, Pol the Poland guys and the Hungarian uh, were very very strong also. At the end of the the plan was that at the end of the race try to separate uh, between the co uh, cooperating the Polak the Polans the Polish uh, the Polans with the with the Spanish uh, uh, together trying to make a break with the Hungarians and at the end they they can success with it. And Manuel, how hard was it for you to come back today after yesterday and, and uh, to race in the C2? ¿Cómo te fue la venida aquí otra vez después de lo que ha supuesto la después de la carrera ayer venido ya aquí? Sí, ayer no no tuve un buen día. Tengo que que revisar un poco qué qué fue lo que pasó estos días porque creo que que me falló un poco la la alimentación porque me encontraba muy muy fuerte y muy bien en las dos primeras vueltas y cuando perdí contacto con con los dos de cabeza que que íbamos los tres en cabeza pues ahí no aguanté una vuelta y después no 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 sentía no me sentía bien no 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 iba tuve un mal día ayer menos mal que hemos podido recuperar para hoy y hoy sí que me encontré ya con con buenas sensaciones uh, yesterday I didn't have a good day. I think it could be because uh, the, the feet uh, doesn't work good. And uh, the, the first uh, race, uh, the first uh, times I feel better, but then I break myself. And But today is another thing. I think uh, I need to check everything, what's happened yesterday. But uh, today I feel in another way and it was everything better. Uh, and a question for Diego. You have both raced with different partners. What makes this combination so good? Eh, ¿Qué es lo que os hace que la, que, que, que la combinación entre vosotros dos vaya tan bien? ¿Qué es lo que, es, ¿Cómo estáis trabajando en equipo que, para que vayáis tan bien juntos? Pues, bueno, eh, venimos trabajando muchos años ya en la pista, entonces tenemos una compenetración ya de, de muchos años, no nos hacen falta muchos kilómetros y yo creo que está ahí la, la cuestión. Llevamos montando en el CEDOR desde el año 2013. We have a very long experience together, working together. Uh, we are very well compenetrated and, and uh, we are get used to, to work together and everything is, is fine between us. And the first gold medal for Spain for this week. It must be a relief to finally have a gold medal for a, such a proud canoeing nation. Fue la primera medalla de oro para sí, España, ¿no? Sí. sí, la verdad es que se hizo esperar un poquito, ¿no? Otros años España conseguía más oros y es cierto que este año pues se hizo esperar un poquito, pero afortunadamente eh, se consiguió el oro y, y por suerte hemos sido nosotros.
Yeah, it's true. Uh, it, sometimes it's more difficult, it takes more time uh, to find this gold medal, but uh, today everything happens good and we can, uh, at the end, uh, find this good moment to have this golden medal. Well, congratulations to both of you. Enjoy it and uh, hopefully we'll see you together next year uh, in Portugal, yes. Portugal, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ivan. Thank you. So there is an intent to go on for another year, Stefan. He said, so you're important. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, it has well, been, it's a proud uh, canoeing nation, Spain. They have uh, produced so many good, good C1 and C2 crews over the years. It's all across about. Across all the disciplines yes. of, of racing, the, the, yeah. the slalom, the sprint, yeah. and now, and the marathon, obviously. And yeah. Yeah, they've had a great year this year in Tokyo. I think they they won the women's slalom, and yeah, the K4 obviously does well. And yeah, it's just solid, a solid canoeing nation. It is. In fact, didn't they got medal in the women's 200 K1 as well with Portella? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, I think so. Yeah. Medals across the board, across the disciplines, across the distances, just. Brilliant. The so Romanian, good. sorry, Stefan. The Romanian, Romanian's just finishing their last 200 yeah. meters. Last boat on course today, Trifon and Baragal. And then we'll take a short break and be back with the women's K2 at midday, 12 o'clock. Yeah, and as usual, we start a little bit earlier to um, introduce the race. And it will be uh, an exciting event, for sure. And with it being the only race on course, we'll be able to follow it from start to finish. Unbroken coverage of the K2 women. So the last few strokes for the Romanians. Done. That looked like a tough day out. It is probably their first um, international marathon. So the course umpires come in for a tea break as we go to the highlights of this morning's racing. That was the men's C2 race and maybe some highlights from the K2, if we're lucky. Here we go for the boys K2. Chaos in the early stages. Misfortune right from the start for some. And poles who were so strong over those first 500 meters just couldn't actually make it stick in the group activity. Big groups all the way around. It got bigger at times. The red hat of Simpkins there controlled throughout. But it was the Hungarians in the black eventually who came good. 
Second Hungarian crew outclassed in the end. Germans on the left of the shot there, impressed so much, catching up twice. And there's the misfortune of the day, really. South Africans just so, so unlucky with bronze in their grasp. Gold always going to Hungary after the last 1,500 metres. And Denmark followed up with the silver. A great morning's race in Stefan. I enjoyed it. There's Absolutely. confirmation of the results. Sellier and Kolosvari just too good over the closing stages of that race. Utria and Marchetti, they were there to pick up the pieces after the South African swam. And uh, South African crews today just didn't have it their way. Finished 10th and 13th, misfortune for both. And I'm sure they'll be back stronger next year and maybe even the year after. Few too many DNFs, injury, illness and misfortune. And uh, hopefully everyone who needed rescuing is well now. Here's the C2 results. We've just had an interview with Campos and Romero who implied that they were going on to next year. Borgil and Zucora second, Kovac, Horvath third, Lacerda and Coelho fourth. A non-finish for Brazina, who was third yesterday. And that closes our morning session. It does. Uh, welcome back. We're within uh, a little bit less than an hour uh, to watch the next uh, and very exciting uh, race, K2 Women. Thanks for staying tuned. Welcome back.
Bad. Yeah, kind of.
paddling in the pool of water than the other boats. You must always just look at the space in front of you. Uh, that's Kisley laying down the law. Here comes Cobra. It's Cobra. He's taking Campos on. Stroke by stroke, he's going past him. And he's gone past him like he's standing still. What a race. What a race. God, be I calm, Gagin. Be calm, be calm, be calm. The Hungarians are away. The South Africans are South away. Africa side are by away. side. By but it's side. Hungary. Hungary take the initiative. Just a mass of quality paddles. See collision in the background. World champ. Look at that. Uh, from that's gonna Czech be Republic. That's gonna be tears, it's gonna be laughing. Yeah. She can't believe it. She's so happy. is going to get squeezed out. That is dangerously oh, close yeah. to the edge. It is McGregor. It is McGregor. No one has given up. Boris is hanging on. Alonso is hanging on. Gold medalist Hank McGregor, South Africa. So the last image of that promo, Stefan, was Renata Che winning K2 senior women's back in Hungary a good few years ago now. But she's back for more. This time with Sofia Celi Voros, world champions from two years ago. What's your predictions? Yeah, exactly. She's back for more. And it is the 21st consecutive year she's uh, doing K2 in the uh, World Championships. Uh, out of these um, 20, 20, <clears throat> one year, 20 years previously, she had had 13 gold medals. 13 gold medals together with six different partners. Wow. So, so it's quite, quite an ama amazing track record. You got the two Spanish crews in shot there. Fernandez Alvarez second two years ago. Yeah. Osa and Toledo third two years ago. They're going to be, well, very keen, aren't they? Um, Absolutely. To, to step up, really. Absolutely. It will be an exciting, very exciting race.
beautiful, beautiful uh, Romania, uh, where we are now for the next um, the next race in uh, the 2021 World Marathon Championships, and that is K2 Women coming up. Uh, we were into discussing. Uh, uh, to different crews. <clears throat> Hungary, of course, uh, two good crews. They always have good crews, but Renato Che and Sofia Varos, the champions from from um, last last time, 2019 in China, as boat number 565. They will absolutely be among these ones that uh, want to win. Here's the course they'll be on. Standard as it has been all weekend. The first yellow lap, big lap, no portage at the end of it. Subsequent laps marked in red for these women this afternoon. It'll be five more red laps. The end of each red lap, there's a portage. And then the final lap, just a thousand meter lap up to the 500 meters and back to the finish. So, yeah, in, the, in that discussion, Stefan, we've got the first four from last year's, or not last year's, <laughs> last time's World Championship back in 2019 now. And uh, that, that's yeah, top four already in. There's not a lot of gaps for anyone else in those medals, really. So it's uh, a big ask for anyone to break into that. Hungary first two years ago. Spain took second and third with South Africa, Hartley and Mackenzie taking fourth. They're all here today. Boats they'll be in, double kayaks, two people, sat down, double-ended paddle and a rudder at the back, operated by the person in the front of the boat. Start list, Ward and Hockley. That's an interesting one because Ward way back in, in Brandenburg, Paddled yeah. with a junior, Saskia, Saskia Hopley third in the junior race, our first, our opening race of this championship. Back in Brandenburg, race with Kai to purchase and got a medal against the big Hungarians back then. Bohalmi and Rendesi, Rendesi junior world champion two years ago. Hungarian K2s traditionally have a very good record in this race. Sorensen and Rode from Denmark, 576. I'm just below them, Kessler and Hue. Kessel and Huey seventh two years ago. Osa and Toledo third two years ago from Spain, just two lanes down from them. So loads of talent in this race, Stefan, and and, yes. and probably some new names we we've yet to find out. And uh, yeah, Denmark. Denmark uh, uh, used to have very good female uh, um, <clears throat> K2s, and they have done a great uh, championship so far. So I think we should watch uh, both. Uh, uh, Danish crews this time, and Winter and Penelope Hostrup, uh, and uh, Anne Sørensen and Mathilde Rudd. That's Winter and Hostrup in that coloured boat. Five, yeah. six, seven there from Spain. One of the big players, Fernandez and Alvarez. So it looks like a good big start line. It's going to be quite crowded on there. French there, Kessler and Huey. Seventh. Two years ago. Ward and <coughs> Hockley in the yellow boat there. Do apologize to Jenna Ward for calling her Jenna Ward. She's married now and there's bit, but on the program and for the ease of the spectators, that's what we're going to refer to her as for the duration of the race. And there they go. Renata Che, Sophia Voros, Voros second yesterday, hoping to go one better today. <coughs> I mean, you talk about the pressure of coming in as world champion, Stefan. I mean, yeah, literally 
Renata is old enough to be the mother of most of the people in this race now. Yeah. And these yes. people have, have known about her or of her ever since they've been marathon racing. Yeah. 20, uh, 21st year she's doing this. I mean, she have used, she have had with six different partners. Andrea, starting with Andrea Pitts back in, back in the ages, continued Cornelia Sonda. Uh, and they took three gold medals together. Benedict Foldon won a gold medal. And then, back then, during that period, uh, Denmark was the ones that was beating beating them. They were second three years in a row, uh, beaten by Henriette Engel and Anne Lolk, uh, the, these great Danish K2 paddlers. And then uh, also uh, beaten by um, once by Anne Lolk and Mette Barfoot. But most other races, they have actually won. Then Benedicke Benedic Foldum was her par partner, Ramona Farkasti, Alexandra Barra, and now Sofia Celai Burris. Pretty so impressive. Think, you, no, you must feel yeah. like your luck's in if you get a seat in the back of that boat. You must think the odds, the odds of you having a successful race are pretty high. Yeah. Going across exactly. the screen there, Solway and Duffield from Great Britain in the white boat with the stripes on it. That's the Danes. Nice distinctive boat. All boats should be distinctive, Stefan, to make our life a lot easier. So that's Winter and Hostrup, both already raced this weekend. Spaniards, five, six, seven. Fernandez and Alvarez, second place two years ago. Now, that was a really good K2 race two years ago. I remember that was quite an exciting one. Good yeah, group. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Lots of, lots of changes in there. And, yeah, it was quite fun to watch. It will probably be the same this time. <clears throat> quite many of them. Uh, could manage to be in the, in the top group for a while. And then it comes down to what the Hungarians do. I mean, they always try and break away. And if, if they do break away, it's a tough one to catch. But we saw yesterday in the K1s, they didn't have it all their own way this year. They oh. were caught after every attempted breakaway. And that, that's you know, a significant change from a few years back. It is, but as Kisley said uh, in the interview, they yeah. they they um, try and they watch how 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 it looks and how it is out there, and then they adapt. And she seemed very comfortable with however that race panned out. She, exactly. If if they stay this day, if they don't, they don't. It it was really of of no consequence to her. It wasn't going to change her. So from the bottom of your screen, Milova and Telska from Czech. Osa and Toledo from Spain just backing onto the pontoon. One of the big players. Next to them, Kessler and Huey also. Sorensen and Rode from Denmark. Next to them, Garo and Maslin from Argentina. Just above them. And the stripy boat that you can see there is Solway and Duffield from Great Britain. Oh, is everyone paddling off from the pontoon? Maybe... Maybe there's a little delay. And the Romanian coach is there. But yeah, it seems like they might be, they might have been told to paddle around because they were all just backing onto the pontoon, weren't they? Yeah. Maybe something's not ready yet. Five, seven, seven, Kessler and Hue. <coughs> Seventh two years ago. A nice overview of the course. Landmass to the left of the course there, as we look at it, is an island. There's more water to the other side. And, yeah, definitely everyone's been told to take a break by the look of it. We might be able to inform you as to what's happening at... Uh, Oh, 
We'll see. Certainly, we're waiting for something here. No news from <coughs> no news from the officials yet, but I'm sure they'll find something. Just a short delay, just to heighten the tension before we go. So as they paddle around, not what they wanted to happen, but it's not the end of the world. They seem to be heading back towards the landing stage now. Start pontoon. They'll be backing on. The other Hungarians in a white boat there. That's Kahami and Rendesi. Looking at the recent years, <clears throat> um, Renato Say and Sofia Salai Burris won 2019-18 um, with Spain on the second and, and bronze position both years, actually. Yeah. Uh, 2017, though, Amanda Kisli and Sara, Sara Mikhailik uh, won uh, with Renate and Alexandra Barra on sec second place and Great Britain, actually, on the third how is the British teams this um, event? New to it, really. Um, Rebecca Solway and Flo Duffield have just been uh, booed up this year. Um, really, you know, two, two new crews, Nushi Freeman and James Swarbrick. Again, just, just from this year, it's uh, early days for us at home at the moment in the women's K2. We haven't got an established crew going yet. But both Fairly hardcore boats. I think none, neither of them will give it up easily. And there's a lot of future there from those four. We're on in a prize giving ceremony for the K2 you and your man. Perhaps this is what they were waiting for. Or they start senior women's K2. Hard for Renata not to experience her son getting the gold medal in life, waiting for her own start. Yeah, that's true. So it looks like there was just a GPS issue.
great result for the Argentinian boys there, Stefan. I think that's yes. a nice little step up for them. Absolutely. Great to have coming generations in this quite new nation. They have been they have participated for a couple of for quite many years now, but anyway, it counts this as one of the small new ones. guys as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good race from them and they just took advantage of the misfortune of the South Africans at that last portage and, and made it stick. So here we go again. Let's try again. From the oh. bottom. Go on, <clears throat> Stefan, you go. No, go on. Go on. <laughs> so from the bottom, Czech and Spanish and French and Danes, the next three up, all big contenders. Then we move up to the Argentinians and the stripy boat of Great Britain just backing in now with Solway and Duffield. Romania and Ukraine above them, probably not big players, but above them, boat 571, Tahalmi and Rendesi, next to Hartley, Mackenzie. Two boats up from them, so we go Russia and Sweden. Then we're into some more big names with Fernandez, Alvarez, Winter Hostrup, and then Jay and Rush. Great lineup for three minutes war break next to Jay Borosh. If they can stick with them on the start, it's a great little adventure to be had in this race. Everyone ready. Way to go. <coughs> Saw the white boat of the second Hungarian crew right in the middle of the field there. Early away, they're in the lead. That's Kahalmi and Rendesi. Right in the center of your shot there. Kahalmi, Rendesi, looking very, very strong indeed. Here they are. That looks like a pretty brutal K2 to me. Absolutely. I haven't seen that. them before, I think, doing K2 together. New crew. Hartley and Mackenzie in the blue boat. <laughs> it seems like people are struggling to stay with this. Yeah. As we fan out, Hartley's just making yeah. the effort just to get across there. Mackenzie pushing her all the way. There must be another group somewhere because we haven't got the other Hungarians. And right down at the bottom of the screen was a big with the Spanish and the French. There's another group somewhere. Five, six, seven is Fernandez Alvarez. They've already latched on to the leaders. Blue boat of the South Africans just in shot. But these two look strong, strong. It really does. Rendesi, junior world champion two years ago. And this is stretching things out straight away. Second South African crew there, also in there. Ward and <coughs> Hockley. And is that is that it? Is it strung out to that extent? We need an overview. There's Jay in the yellow yeah. boat at the back of that group. So it really is strung out and very, very quickly. Danes back there as well. Great Britain in the stripy boat at the back. And this is, wow, a display. Surprising, power. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, not how we expected this to pan out. The second South African crew there, Ward and Hockley just hanging in. It's the South Africans and the Spanish that have got away with what looks like an extremely powerful Hungarian K2. Yeah. Right after them uh, is uh, Sweden and Ar Argentina, actually. <clears throat> Sweden with Rebecca Jostotter and Melina Andersson. Rebecca from Nyköping and Melina from from uh, Broviken. And Andersson's had a good weekend, Stefan. Yeah, absolutely. Youngsters coming into this now. 
Toledo, uh, Osa from Spain, also with them pretty much, as is Kessler and Huey. Che and Voros, some 66 metres, it seems, off the pace right now. So, Kahami, Rendesi, just awesome, really. Yeah. Stretching out this field right from the start. And keep on going at a very, very high speed. And then, a prize giving ceremony coming up for C2 men. So while we watch the presentation, the lead group of four, which was Hungary, Spain, South Africa, and South Africa was joined by the Argentinians. And again, the Argentinians impressing Stefan Garro was so good in the short course right on day one or two. I can't remember now which yeah. day it was. A little came up a little bit short on her portages, maybe, but was there or thereabouts with those top girls in terms of high end speed. So they've made it back to the group now sitting on the rather uncomfortable fifth wash while the Hungarians just press on. Lead changing now for the first time. That's Fernandez and Alvarez taking it on and taking it on with massive intent by the look of it. Look at the speed yeah. that they are pressing on. They're, gonna, they're intent on making this break. Hungarians sitting with them. South Africans trying to come around the outside, but not be... Oh, no, it's, it's the Hungarians. It's Hungarians. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So... Wow, I mean, they're not hanging around, are they? Spanish move up yeah. to the side. South African Hartley moves into the V. It's, they're going to be so glad. You know, in a group like this, with one leader that's prepared to do that, you want to make sure that when that group rotates, you're in the V when that crew is leading. Yeah. Either side of that Hungarian crew is not easy work. Argentinians go out to the left. They've done a big catch-up already. 
and that has to take its toll in the end. <coughs> now being led by the Hungarians, Che and Voros. <clears throat> so Hartley didn't make it into the V, and Hartley, Mackenzie, they are hoping that the pace will slow. That V is open, gradually clawing back to it now. That's desperate. Yeah, I think they were a bit shock, shocked by the speed set by the Hungarians in, the, in at that stage. They're going to claw it back, though, Yeah, making the move to get into it now. I mean, this is full on from those Hungarians at the front. Absolutely, absolutely. They, and and so, Hartley still hasn't made it into the V. She's dropped out again. Fallen it's back. Certainly, it's certainly full on for the second group as well. The second group. Moving well, though. And the first group, I, I think, is down to three. I don't think... You don't fail twice oh. to get in the V and then oh. make it the third time. That's a journey backwards now for Hartley yeah. and Mackenzie. They're going to be swallowed up by the chase pack before they yeah. get anywhere near that front group again. And, wow, I mean, if, if a crew like Hartley and Mackenzie can't get from the back of the group into the V, Stefan, you know that group is shifting. Yes. <clears throat> And it's these two doing the damage. Watching over their shoulders. Asking now for those a paddles go to down. Do the job. Ward and Hockley go through. Hockley, the junior. Bronze medal in junior. Right back on day one. Spaniards, Fernandez and Alvarez. South Africans bringing them out towards the middle of the course. Spaniards go round the back and up the left side of the group, presumably. Although, if you were the Spaniards there, you, you might want to sit on the half V because when the Hungarians go again, you know they're going to go hard. So we're looking at Che Voros, Milova, Telska, Osa and Toledo, Winter and Hostrup. They're just going to catch the Argentinians of Garo and Maslin. Might have been <clears throat> a little bit of a shock also for for uh, uh, Renata and Voros, the speed set of their teammates. They won't give up. They will do anything they can to, to close that gap. Bad news for the Swedish crew, though, Stefan. Unfortunately, George Dotter and Anderson have a 15-second yeah. penalty, presumably from the top turn, Mr. Boy, I, I would okay. guess. Yeah. So that'll be tough for them. So here's the leaders. Ward and Hockley. There is that Swedish crew. Five, six, eight. And they're going to have to stand at the first portage. It's a long way away, the first portage. Somebody will probably be able to get the message to them before then. They're with Sorensen and Rudd of Denmark back in that group. 500 metres to the first turn, first bottom turn. Through go the Spaniards. Spain, Hungary, South Africa. The chase pack, though, being led by Che and Boris, 95 metres behind at the moment. And between those two, about halfway between, is Mackenzie and Hartley. They've got a lifeline there with that second group coming up. These two have a job to do now. Argentinians to their right, Spain tucked in the back. And the Danes, at the moment, Winter and Hostrup, just about hanging on to that group. Group of three away. Fernandez Alvarez lead. So confirmation that it was a missed boy on the top turn for the Swedes. I mean, that's unfortunate, Stefan. Sometimes that's your fault. Other times you just get a tap on the back of the boat at the wrong time, and it's unavoidable. 
Yeah, but the good thing nowadays is that you aren't automatically disqualified. You got a 15-second yeah. penalty. So the, the day isn't over for you. Not even destroyed. 15 seconds yeah. in, is not that much. So Hartley and Mackenzie are going to be swallowed up by the chase pack. And that lead has come down by 10 metres since the Spanish have been leading to 85 metres from Che and Voros. <clears throat> I think they will be together to the portage. I think you're right, Stefan. I think after that first lap, probably the Spanish and the South Africans are more in need of a little bit of recovery than they are in yeah. terms of pushing on. Yeah. That was hard, super hard. Round they go, bottom turn. Alvarez, Fernandez leading. Hungarians go again. Pace goes up. South Africans will want to cut the Spanish out because nobody wants to drop round the back of these Hungarians and try and catch up. So Spaniards have got that and it's going to come to Ward to drop round the back. She puts her paddles down now to go round. And that's going to be a long trip up the side for them. <clears throat> Just to get to the half V might be the target here. Get to the tail of the Hungarians and take a bit of a breather. There's the chase pack. Hartley, McKenzie settled in there nicely. Ward going all the way to the side. You can see how hard it is. But they're going to make it. And the speed's slightly more manageable this time. Three boats away still, though. Almost 90 metres from Che and Voros. Argentinians take in their turn. That's, again, significant. You, you would think that Che would be on that chase alone at the moment. So perhaps... It's a change of guard at the top. <laughs> 90 metres, the difference, and it's been at 90 metres for quite a while now. Further back down the field, just getting a glimpse. Some of the boats towards the back end. So you're feeling quite fortunate now if you're the Spanish or the South Africans there. Yeah. you got a boat that wants to stay in front. And their motivation, I'm sure, to stay at a reasonable speed is sat in a yellow boat at the front of Group 2, Stefan, with Renata yeah. there. They so, know they don't want her up in this group. Oh. Great Britain there. Solway and Duffield currently in 18th place. Oh, it's 100 metres again. So when the Hungarians... <laughs> Or in top, the uh, distance increases. Yeah, and it seems there's nothing that second group can do about that. Exactly. So, so this looks like a break that's destined to stay. Hung those Hungarians can rest every now and then, and uh, and just increase the lead when it's their turn. So Sorensen and Rud of Denmark trailing Adel Shinova and Maneva from Russia.
30 seconds almost back to that chase pack. Yeah. Well, I don't think anyone saw it going this way. Right from the word go, these two hit the front. And there's the gap they've created, a significant gap. It is. It looked like <clears throat> Renata and, and Verus were strong enough to to uh, try to close the gap, but uh, and then maybe just stop not stopped but rested a, a bit for on the on the <coughs> watches of of, um, of the group for a while and then set the speed again but it looks like they can't actually they yeah, are it's, now uh, and, that's all they had yeah so ward takes the lead and i would imagine if you're in that second group every time either the spanish or the south africans take the lead you you get a little bit yeah. more hope that you could <coughs> potentially closed down. Yeah. But you know that the Hungarians in that front, Bahami and Rendesi are resting at that point. And when they go again, they're going to pull another 10 meters on you. Yeah. So it's going to be a very interesting afternoon in this race to see what happens. I think there's too much endurance in that front group and too much quality for anyone to drop off without an accident or an incident. So those three are set. We're back to the Russians and the Danes. They are in 10th and 11th position, the Russians and the Danes. And there is Swedes the Swedes. there also, yep. Spain, wisely, I think, sitting on the half V. If they sit there, when the Hungarians go, they go with them immediately. If they move to the right of the South Africans and the Hungarians go, they either have to fight the South Africans to get on the wash or drop all the way around the back. So I think Alvarez making the right decision there just to sit behind the other two. There go the Hungarians. There goes Alvarez out to the left. And that's why she was sat halfway back, not going up the other side. Hungarians go again, go hard again. Let's see the distance. It was 82 meters when that yeah. effort started. Hungarians sense that, I think, that the other group had closed yeah. a little bit and they're just not having it. It's already a race between the two Hungarian crews, I think. Yep. And now Renata and Voros is uh, in the lead in the second second group. Trying They've got some help in that second up. group. Yeah. They've got yeah. Osa and Toledo. I know Osa and Toledo aren't in that group anymore. So that's just a, a group of four, which yeah. is Hungary, Argentina, Czech, and South Africa. So that's that's a strange group. It is. Hartley so and McKenzie, yes. Yeah. They belong you know there. Hartley and McKenzie can't close yeah. the gap because they've already fallen off once. So yeah. it's literally only the Hungarians in there yeah. who are going to claw this gap back. Interestingly, they didn't lose any distance or haven't so far on the lead group during this lead from Pahalmi and Rendesi. They is almost the same. They are ca they are closing a little bit, some meters. They, five, they are ten closing. Meters. Yeah. So your prediction could still be right, Stefan. They could be together. Yeah, but not not uh, not until the portage. No. You can see the intent in Renata in the background there. Yeah. Stroke rate's very high. And they're still, though, at 80 meters, the difference. 
But if they can hold that distance when the Hungarians are leading, they can close it when the lead swaps to either yeah. the Spaniards or the South Africans. So currently okay. looking at a little bit brighter for Chile. Yeah. And <clears throat> but they need to do all the job themselves. Yeah, they've got no choice, I don't think. Through go the Spaniards. <coughs> Hungarians want to stay on the right of the Spaniards. South Africans should cut in, really, at that point. But I think they don't want to annoy the, the Hungarians either. So it's a bit of a tough call. But Ward there, she's going to drop round the back now. Yeah. And again, probably stay in that half V rather than go up the side of the Spaniards. One off, and that's the checks, I think from that chase group. So the speed in the chase group is intensifying. We're just left with Hungary, South Africa and Argentina. And they're closing. <clears throat> Still 80 metres on the electronic timing, but it does feel like that gap's closing. Yeah, 75 now. Through go Hartley and Mackenzie doing their share. If they can hold the gap to a consistent 80 metres or under, the next time Che goes, that gap will close another few metres. Leaders, Spain, Fernandez and Alvarez. Hockley behind Ward. And the second, hung, um, second South African crew. Hartley and Mackenzie doing their share. Argentina with them. Seventy two meters now the gap. So a ten meter. Again, over this lead. Spanish, very tidy K2. Fernandez, Alvarez, second last year to Che and Voros, who currently are in the second group. Romanians, a bit further down the field, Trefescu and Bruna in 12th place at the moment, 360 metres or so back from the lead. And there with Great Britain crew of Freeman and Swarbrick and the Swedes, George Dotter and Anderson. So first portage, not too far away now. Lots of experience in that front group. I don't expect any dramas. Perhaps the second group. The Argentinians are the unknown there, but they race so well as a nation this weekend. The junior men this morning getting a medal. So Spain, Hungary, South Africa. The lead down to under 70 metres now, 65 metres. Spain press on. Here go the Hungarians again. So 60 metres, just over 60 metres was the lead when these Hungarians took over. Kahalmi and Rendesi wanting to stretch the lead again. 
Not comfortable with 60 meters. <clears throat> Portage coming up. There's the chase. Not often we've seen Renata chasing. She did back in Hungary in the K1 after she had a time penalty. And that one didn't end well for her. She was second there behind Kaziskova of Czech Republic. That was one of the most emotional wins we've seen in the time I've been doing the commentary, yeah. that's for sure. Pace has slowed a little bit at the front. They're still gained. They've gained about another five, six meters since they've been leading. But there isn't that quite the same sense of urgency that they had earlier. Spain on the inside, South Africa on the outside. Portage just a few meters away now. Checks 579 Milova and Telska currently with the Danes, Winter and Hostrup. So there's the gap. It's not too big. Mistakes or slowness on the portage will be costly. And what are the Spanish doing? They've got so much landing stage to get out on there, and they messed that up horribly. Through comes South Africa. Hungarians also running well. Spain, just, well, basic errors at the portage. Che and Boros running through with Hartley, McKenzie. Encouragement for the South Africans there. And through they go. Spaniards have caught up on the run. Which suggests that the running speed wasn't too high from the Hungarians. They might lose some time here. Yeah. Because Jay is pretty sharp on her portages and very well organized usually. So they'll be quick getting in the boat. Argentinians just struggling with that pace over land. Out at the other end, the second Spanish crew, the Danes and the Czechs. That's Osa, Toledo, Milova, Telska, and Winter and Hostrup all running through together. The gap between the lead group and Che and Boros, 30 meters now, 40 meters. I don't know, that may be the electronic things going wrong because it's back up to 56, 58, 59. It must have been as they closed at the portage. Yeah. <clears throat> now the real distance is 65 meters behind and there's only two left but it was the two that are doing the work so they could trade leads now quite comfortably quick glance over the shoulder from Kahalmi and they increase in speed a little bit I mean <clears throat> Emesa Kahalmi she's a thousand meter uh, specialist as it seems uh, for looking at the previous results also from this year she won the the flat water um, the world cup uh, the thousand meter world cup in seged uh, in may uh, this year on the k1000 meter and then uh, several wins in k4 500,000 meter for under 23 category also this year so she's a sprinter and that explains a little bit of the of the speed they they set from the start and it will be very interesting to see her in the far end of this race. Absolutely. We, we've seen her on the marathons before as a junior, yes. though, I'm sure, or maybe under 23. The name yeah. is, is super familiar, and I'm yeah. sure she's, she's been here. There's the penalty for the Swedes. 15 seconds. You can just see the clock ticking down on the right-hand side. Five to go. Osa and Toledo on their own currently. And away the Swedes go with the Romanians. 
So the lead gradually increasing again at the front. And it just won't close. Che and Voros, they're trying, but the lead won't come down for them. Denmark and Czech away. Ukraine there. That's Andrew Kiv and Yukevich. And with them, Solway and Duffield. So that's 15th. So yeah, I might have the wrong Ukrainians there. It might be Isaiva and Isaiva, and they're 15th and 16th place. Here at the front, though, speed remains high. Still staying around that 14k an hour mark. This simplifies the job so much for the Spaniards and the South Africans as opposed to a big group race. Only having to deal with one Hungarian crew instead of team tactics, which often happens in the K2. Paddles go down. South Africans are the ones who are going to take this on. Spaniards will go round the Hungarians who stop for a drink. Argentinians. Garrow and Maslin. Pretty impressive so far. They're on their own in no man's land at the minute. They've just fallen off the back of the group of Che, Boros, Mackenzie, Hartley. Spaniards duck round the back. Pretty much the same pattern as this time on the last lap. Yeah, actually, Emes <clears throat> Kohalmi was in the winning K2 for Hungary uh, as a junior, uh, K2 junior back in 2018. And they had the same, I remember the race now, um, they, it was the same pattern. They set a very high speed uh, over the first couple of laps and had a winning margin of two, uh, more than two minutes, actually, to the second Hungarian crew that wow. were second. So... Yeah, so she has some experience. Clearly got a good engine. Yes, yes. And so has uh, Randesi, who won the, won the K1 Junior. Uh, in China, two years in ago. In China, yeah. yes, yes. Youngsters. Gap's closing a little under 60 yeah. meters for the first time. But that's just while Randesi and Kaomi take a break. Russia and Denmark side by side. Mackenzie and Hartley doing their share alongside Che and Boris. Freeman and Swarbrick currently getting the best of the race between the two GB crews. Che leads that chase group and Che leads with intent again there. That is a concerted effort. Most definitely that front group isn't safe. But it's still a big gap to close.
lead three. Hungarians in the lead again there. And that's when they put on the squeeze. Gap consistent. At around 60, 70 meters. It extends every time Kahami and Rendesi lead and shrinks down whenever they take a break. So it's the Hungarians doing the damage. Groups really spread out now. Yeah, the speed is just too high in front. And I mean, now it's a race between the two first groups and so the speed the speed will keep high and that is spreading spreading uh, everyone out yeah and neither of these first two groups can let the pace drop really no and so you know, pretty much everyone's top speed this group has the advantage of having three leaders as opposed to just the two there's a little bit more rest to be had. They also know, though, they can't afford a mistake anywhere. Now it's up to 80 meters again. Here they are. South Africa and Hungary, Renate Che and Boros. But the lead changes, the Hungarians yeah. drop back, and that's you just got to keep believing in that second group. But sooner or later, one of the leads will be a slow one. Argentinians oh. still on their own. Doing well. Impressive, the Argentinians, all yes. weekend. And yes. So speed at the top drops to around 13k an hour as opposed to 14 when the Spanish lead. Chase group sticking around the 14 mark for now at least. So the gap's closing. And that's the danger if the Hungarians overcook their leads. The, yeah. the lead from the, the two people who should be helping them just can't be as strong. If the Hungarians get relatively too strong in that group, that's when it's going to begin to break down. Yeah. You can see from the stroke rate of Renate and, and Wörth now that they are determined to, to really go for it now. I mean, they can do this for, for, <clears throat> for a very long time, but uh, once they have decided, they only have one attempt, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen other people in other races move out, Stefan, not just yeah. be behind. And, and you can see the big waves rolling down the outside there. Yeah. They are there. And maybe if next time the Hungarians in that front group lead, that chase group just sits on a wave and soaks yeah. up that lead, just yeah. takes the sting out of it. It would be a good thing to do, I think. Yeah. I don't think Renata's thinking in those terms, is she? she she's going to use power to do this job. Yeah, uh, I just go for it and close yeah. the gap as soon as possible. 
I, I think they could be doing it more intelligently at the moment. Catch up when the <laughs> Hungarians aren't leading and soak it up on those outside waves when they are. She's not used to this situation, but no. here it comes. It's closing now rapidly. <clears throat> it's down to 50 meters or a little bit more. And here we there go. We go. <laughs> so that's your, that's your 50 yeah. meters going to increase yeah. right there. Yeah. So they can't move out now. They're too near no. the turn. So they're going to have to just track behind them. It's actually a race now between the two Hungarian crews. Yeah. They are not helping each other. Not at all. Not uh, not what we saw in the juniors when when they had, they, um, the leading group uh, slowed down and helped the others coming through. This is uh, rather the opposite. This is using every opportunity they have to turn the knife, Stefan. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're going to put some hurt into Renata if they can. And immediately the gap increases again. Now it's 75 meters. But not looking as fresh in that front group, I think. It's going to start to, over the next two, three laps, we're going to start to see if any cracks begin to appear in yeah. these two. Yeah. South Africans coming left. Let's see the Spaniards make a better job of it this time. There you go. There's a whole you know, 20, 30 meters of landing stage there. Last time they chose the same bit that the Hungarians were on. But through they go. Spaniards running extremely well. South Africans also. This is where Renata has a chance, Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. Those Hungarians don't run too well. They've been overtaken by both the other crews. And yeah. there's just that little window of opportunity here to get 10 meters. South African fan club, excited and rightly so. It's quite a long challenge in Portage, close to 200 meters. Which is uh, significantly long. Well, it's a minute, a minute of running. Be. Stefan, yeah. yeah, it's a, that is a long way. Argentinians coming in on their own still, still moving well. And away you go the Spaniards, South Africans out well. Argentinians coming in, quick drink swap. Renate has not missed the medal in 20 years on this um, <clears throat> in this category, K2. And the only, the only partner she hadn't had a goal to get with, together with is Vivian Foliat. And they, they had a silver, but mostly uh, golds and silvers for her. Seven, 13 golds and seven silver. I think it is. Spaniards, Osa and Toledo. Pace at the front being dictated now by the other, the other Spaniards. Fernandez and Alvarez. Face down now to yeah. low, very low. low 13s. Hungarians go through. I think the Spaniards are getting tired. I think the South Africans are also at their limit. Yeah. 
but still it's um you still they are useful to to uh, hungry. yeah just to use as a rest every now and then yeah. these two looking very good still <laughs> gap between those front two groups growing gradually again closing in on 80 meters as the hungarians lead so i think uh, at some point you can only take the disappointment of them moving away from you so many times i think before your brain just says you know what will settle yeah these two are just too strong yeah <clears throat> Great Britain, Romania, and Sweden. Good close up. Seems quite relaxed. Just as Spain, actually. Yeah. These these two were really good last year, those that yeah. Spanish crew. A real step up from previous years. Also super impressed with Jenna Ward in the front of that K2. She must be one of the best drivers out there. She's always at the front of these K2 races. <clears throat> and right time, right place. But there's a big skill in doing that. We're getting information from the powers that be that the K2 men's race, which follows this one, have a slight delay on it of half an hour. So instead of the men's K2 being at 2 o'clock Romanian time, it will now be at 2.30. Gives us a bit more time to have a snack in between and a debrief and a cup of tea. All the nice things in life, Stefan. Things we yeah, work for. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> we can spend our earnings on tea and biscuits in the in the rests. It won't be many many then. Well we can maybe share a biscuit and a a tea bag. In between us, yes. Yep. <laughs> So South Africa leading from Hungary and Spain. They've pretty much got a pattern going for their laps now. The South Africans lead this section. Spain drop into the back. Just before the turn, the Hungarians take over again. And I really think that Renata needs to move out into those big waves. Yeah. Just to take a break. Yeah. If you, if you can match this group speed, but with slightly less effort, for a whole lap, then you can make a play for it on the following lap. And South Africa seems to do everything they can to keep to the, keep the distance um, uh, good. You can see that from the strokes, the frequency of the stroke. The South Africans do have a little bit higher stroke rate uh, coming from their uh, their domestic river racing, and also Jenna training in Durban with uh, Lee McGregor that uh, always argued on sh short, smaller paddlers pedals uh, to uh, <clears throat> to get a better frequency, uh, more useful for for marathon. But despite that, uh, we can see when they go uh, in top, the stroke rate increases and also the speed. But now it's down to 60 meters again. Seemingly, um, Renato Che and Voros keep, keep the speed going. Would be interesting to see their lap times and compare they're certainly a bit. They're keeping the pressure on, aren't they? Yes, They're not, they're not letting it go yet. 
you know, after this turn, you just wish that they would move out into the yes. middle of the lake. Yeah. And take at least one length as a breather. One length might do it. You know, you're looking, yeah. what, six minutes down here? Yeah. Six minutes of rest. Yeah, they should move, move into the, the left center, right now. now. Yeah. yeah, right now, catching the waves there. The waves are right. You can see them there. They're yeah. there, ready to yeah. be ridden. And yeah, they do exactly as we say. She just hasn't got yeah. experience of that sort of job, I don't think. She's never yeah. done that job before, maybe. A little bit more out. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe she can see a wave now. Yeah. But you can see them. They're just there. Yeah. Just got to move out a little bit more. You can ride down here at the same speed as those other Hungarians and with slightly less effort. Yeah. But now they've gone. I think she was choosing the wrong side as well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's easy from here, isn't it? We've got an aerial yeah, view. Yeah, yeah. You can see it, and you're not as emotionally or physically drained. But that would seem like a basic. You need to be a surf ski paddler to really recognize these kind of waves on a flat water. I'm sure Mackenzie and Hartley have spent their time yeah, doing the surf ski. They're leading now. Yeah. The handover has happened in that chase group. <laughs> Kahami and Rendesi have one intention, and that's that that gap will never change. Exactly. You see by how far back the South Africans and Spaniards are that that speed's pretty high. Paddles down. It's going to be the Spaniards this time. And this, I think, is the slowest lead, the Spaniards. Yeah. and Hockley staying to the right of the Hungarians again Che leads the chase they didn't leave the South Africans on the front there for long Stefan which suggests that oh. uh, that speed isn't <clears throat> high enough and the South Africans are leading and they knew it and they've yep. got to move on So there's your leaderboard, Spain, Hungary, South Africa. Hungary, South Africa, then Argentina still on their own. There they are. Doing well to hold off the other Spanish crew and the Danes behind them. So I think might need your confirmation on this, Stefan. We've done two portages so far, and this is the third. Yeah. yeah. That's right. 
We don't have Jim Rossiter coming for us. It's a nightmare. It's, yeah. it's a nightmare, Stefan. Always he's in the next room. Yeah. We can go to him like small children go to their father for the right information. Yeah. To and that's master. our role. We yeah. normally rely on him. Where we is he? Always. Him? Yeah. We have always done, even since we were young. He has an impressive system going with rulers and paper and lines and all sorts of things. Yeah. He's explained to us many times, yet we still haven't managed to adopt it. The two groups pretty much matching each other for speed now, which isn't a good sign for the chase group. Through go the Hungarians. The distance uh, between the groups didn't uh, shrink as much as it did have no. done previously no. uh, during that session. The Spaniards led, telling that Renato and Voros is uh, getting a little bit, a little bit more tired. Yeah, and that's quite a big gap still. It is 80 meters. Now it will start to to be painful mentally as well for for the second group not getting any closer. No support for the Spanish in the background there. Boris and Che. So three medals here as it stands. Yeah. And it's looking increasingly like this is the way it's going to stay. It's going to be interesting, though, if it stays yeah. like this, Stefan. The last portage, you see the Hungarians aren't too sharp on the portaging compared to the other crews. Yeah. So if the last portage goes this way, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Hungarians coming in for a drink. One, two, nicely done. Spaniards come through. Renata coming in for refreshments. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, yeah. they are. Certainly need it. Yeah, I mean, the, the last portage, they were leading that run, and now they're not. And yeah. yeah. It's got a little air of inevitability about it now. Yeah. Might not be a medal for, for uh, Renato Che and Forrest this time. First race in 20 years. On the other hand, another family member, uh, Renato's son, had a gold medal this morning. So they keep on having medals into the family from world championships. Argentinians, about a minute behind.
Alvarez, Fernandez, the South Africans, and the Hungarians. I think they've also sensed that the urgency isn't quite there anymore from the group behind. Exactly. It's a hundred meter now. Osa and Toledo. They won't be repeating their medal from two years ago. And this chase is over. Yeah, I think they are starting to realize that themselves as well. Argentinians looking super coordinated. So moving on, the Hungarians take the lead again. Talk, talking a little bit to each other. So you can you can see they've picked up on it, Stefan, that the urgency yeah. is gone. And yeah. how? How do they know that? They go yeah, there. You do, though, don't you? You feel it. You feel that. Yeah. that chases over the gap is yeah. now 130 meters it's pretty much doubled in the last lap and that's the chase pack that we can't really call a chase pack anymore because the chase is over and and once yeah, you just lose that intensity it's never coming back again that's for sure so there's your medals and yeah, good for Hockley, and she's going to get a medal in the junior K1 and the senior K2, exactly as Kaita purchased did back in Brandenburg with the same driver, Jenna Ward. And that starts to build a reputation for a driver, most certainly, Stefan. Absolutely. And that was 2016, so five years ago. Yeah. It's 40 seconds now. The gap is rapidly increases now. 150 meters soon. So it's definitely over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, First time. Respect. Yeah, it was very, very interesting, of course. First time in 20 years that Renate is not uh, getting a medal in, in K2. Having done so well with so many partners, Andrea Pitts, Cornelia Sonda, uh, Benedicte Fuldum, Ram Ramona Farcasti, Alexandra Barra, all of them gold medalists, and Sofia Verus as well, uh, pre the previous world championships, and Vivian Foliat with one silver together with, with um, Renate during 20 consecutive K2 world championships. So, so how, how do we feel about that, Stefan? We, we're watching Renate not get a medal for the first time. Yesterday, we watched Hank sort of fading back into the, the top 10 rather than the top two. 
And the, there, there's a sadness to that because, in a way, you don't want to see them not at yeah. the front. They belong at the front. There's no doubt they belong at the yeah. front. That's, that's who they are. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, I mean, I asked Renate such a question in one of the interviews recently. I think it was in China. And she, she said, uh, I just hate uh, these uh, kind of questions. Every, right. every every year is a new yeah. year. And I, I'm always looking forward, not backwards. And I do this because it's still very fun. And I look well, at every race as, as yeah. a unique, uh, unique race. So I will continue as long as I can and as long as it is fun. And I got selected. So yeah. to, I think that's, that's how, how they think. But as a, as a fan, if you like, and we, yeah. we are fans, you know, you've been yeah. a big fan of Renata. Yeah, yeah that's, sure, for many and, years. And to see your, your superstar, if you like, l losing this chase, I, I think that's quite hard to take as a fan. You have to, you have to find a different appreciation. Yeah, it's always difficult. It's, yeah, it's always difficult. I mean, if, if winning for, for winning medal for 20 years in a row, and that then you, you have one race that isn't too good enough to do that, and everyone says you're finished. Finished. Well, I, I'm hard to believe that as well. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it could be just. Just the just one race. One, yeah, yeah. It's just one race and just one but mistake. There, there was a rumor well. that um, Chelai Voros hadn't been well yeah. the past few days as well. Yeah. So, you know, you never know. We're looking at it as uh, as the Renata show, but there's yeah. two of them in that. Boat. Yeah, it is. It is. And we could could see that yesterday as well. So yeah, yeah. It's so easy to, to uh, when uh, athletes having done it very good for many, many years and one race, it's a little bit less good and then, okay, they are finished. But um, yeah, sometimes they are, but mostly not. Yep. Argentinians coming around the top turn there, still on their own, still holding the gap behind them. Sixth position for Argentina. South Africans lead. So now we start looking at the race from here here forward, Stefan. We've got three boats. Yeah. South Africa. We've got Hungary and Spain. Hungarians clearly the fastest on the water. And you saw their turn of speed right from the start. So nobody's going to want to be uh, going head to head or trying to come from behind on the last 500 meters. Spanish seem the quickest over the portages. Yeah, definitely. So it'll be some stage, their minds will turn from trying to keep ahead to trying to win. Jenna Ward there. Taskia Hockley in the back. Through go the Spaniards. So this will be a nice bit of sharing for maybe two more laps before the tension begins to build. Kenzie and Hartley have got a nice lift round to the end of the race. They're going to be fighting for fourth and fifth, though. Partly opted not to do the K1 so she could do this K2 race. They were fourth last year. There's potential 
a fourth this year. But I'm pretty sure that this was Hartley's big shout for a medal. Although even at home in their selection race, one on one, Stefan, um, Jenna and Saskia did beat um, Hartley and Mackenzie. So, oh. So it's not too big an upset in terms of form. And after this top five, there is on you know, sixth position Garo now, and then uh, uh, Argentina Garo Malsain, and then Spain, South Africa, uh, the other. Uh, Russia on the eighth position, ninth is Denmark, and tenth is Denmark, and then follow Czech Republic and Great Britain on twelfth. Sweden thirteenth, Romania, Great Britain, Ukraine, and Ukraine. Sixth and seventeenth. The South Africans take their turn, and it's just going to be a sharing exercise now. Yeah. And these three can relax for a lap or two. Hungarians go again just to make sure they have the lead coming into the portage. Argentinian K2, looks a really good K2 that. Yeah. So Hungary lead into the turn and the fourth portage. Eight and a half K to go till the medals are decided. Hartley and Mackenzie still looking quite strong back there. But the idea of closing the gap has long gone. Almost, yeah, coming on for 200 metres back from these yeah. three now. Hungarians arrive at the portage first. First in, but often last out. The others can't relax too much now. Spain have gone to the other side of the yeah. pontoon for the first time. Be interesting to see if uh, this will be a little gap for yeah for the first two. Spain coming in for a drink this time. As are the South Africans. They both run way better than the Hungarians, even with their drink stop. I think they're going to come out ahead. Yeah. About evens. Looking quite tired in that yellow boat. The South Africans so tidy on the portage, no stress really. It's 
So Mackenzie, Hartley, Che and Voros. Experience portaging there from Chase. You ran past the blue boat. The temptation would have been to get in behind them, but run past them. It just gives you that little bit extra. And out come Argentina. So four portages down, two to go. Yep. A bit of downtime for both the paddlers. And the commentators for this lap, don't think anything significant will happen. Chase is over. And now it's, it's a lap of pretty much nothing happening before the build up to the big finish. Osa and Toledo coming through. They're on their own, trying to close down the Argentinians in front of them. Fourth and fifth in shot, South Africa and Hungary. Osa Toledo about 150 meters behind the Argentinians and about the same distance ahead of this group, which has Russians and the Danes. Two Danish crews, Winter Hostrup and Sorensen and Rudd, and the Russians, Adelshinova and Maneva. Argentinians currently holding on to sixth position. <laughs> South Africans doing their share. And it is just exactly that now. It's everyone does a share till the race begins to hot up in a, another 20 minutes' time. They've currently been out there for an hour and 22. Osa and Toledo looking to close down the Argentinians in front of them. Hundred and fifty meters or thereabouts the difference. Kenzie decided that was enough for their lead. Gap now two hundred meters near enough. So this group was formed with the, with um, Hartley and Mackenzie within the first minute, Stefan. 
yeah. of this race. Yeah. It was those four within, yeah, literally 30 seconds even. You probably look back <laughs> and uh, there it was right from the start. It shows you, really, I mean, it's a bit of an exaggeration of a situation, but you've got to be there, yeah. really, to make sure. I'm sure during that first minute, although things weren't going Renata's way, she wasn't thinking that this was how it would pan out. She was just thinking, you know what, it's a situation, we'll deal with it, and we'll come good in the end. But yeah, sometimes, and we've seen it in the men's yesterday, saw it in the under-23 men, Sometimes if you miss that train at the front, it's gone and there's no closing it down. South Africans leading. It's what marvelous conditions for marathon racing. It has been all, all through the championships here. Great lake and great weather. Yeah. Little to no wind all weekend. Yeah. And not too hot. Not too chilly either. I think. I think the junior men might disagree with you on that, Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> In the start, yeah. Yeah. But it's picking up quite. Soon. Yeah. Lots of space being given by the yeah. South Africans there on their inside. They know at the moment everyone in that group's their friend. And that won't change for a few minutes yet. Opening out the group for the Hungarians to come up the middle. So that must have been communicated, mustn't it? Yeah. So that's verbal communication there. You can't know that without having a chat first. So that, that's a group that's working very, very well together. Yeah. I think they will continue to do that until the final final portage. Most important in this situation for these three is no stress. Help. Keep on helping each other. Don't do any mistakes. So just 6K to go now. The gaps have opened up quite large now. 200 meters back to this first group, another 200 meters back to the Argentinians, another 200 meters back to the Spaniards, and another 200 meters back to the following group. So 200 meters, pretty much the consistent gap between all yeah. the groups here. And it stays 200 meters. That's the weird thing, right? Yeah. You you look at those lead groups when you're not in them. You think, well, they're just traveling the same speed yeah. as us. Why won't Why aren't you there? But that's not how the marathon racing works. You have to get there, and it's really hard to get there. And once the gaps open up, everyone's actually the same speed, aren't they? It's It's just frustrating when you haven't made that jump into the group. The group yeah. gets away from you. You watch that gap increase to a point, and then all of a sudden, we're all going at the same speed. There's your leaders, Kahalmi and Rendesi. 
did the damage literally on the first lap. Well, on the first yeah, thousand meters. Exactly, on the first thousand meters. That is quite unusual. Yeah. Do you think Hungary will try something in this uh, portage? I don't think they can, Stefan. Yeah, no, all, no. all they can do is lead in so hard that you stress the other two. Yeah. But the portage in of the other two is too good. Yeah. So the Hungarians are, you know, or have been so far the worst of the three on the portages. So, so they've got to start to wonder at this stage. They've got yeah. to do some more damage somewhere. Yeah. It might be around this stage on the next lap before the final portage. But can they risk coming in with the other two on that last portage and hope that they can paddle past on the 1,000 metres? It's quite a high-risk strategy, isn't it? It is. I think they, they would like to put an effort before the final portage on the yeah. water. Yeah, maybe just really string the group out around that yeah. last bottom turn. Yeah. So that you're all nose to tail instead of side by side, yeah. and maybe do it that way. But yeah, it's uh, they're certainly not going to be have it all their own way if they arrive at the portage at the same time as these other crews. South Africans are so quick getting in their boat at the other yeah. end, and. Spain seems to be the best runners. Yeah. Yeah. South Africans just having a little look over their shoulder. I don't know what they think they're looking for, but this group's way back now. But it's always the, this little uncertainty. Yeah. Are, are they as tired as we are? Do they come? Have they got some extra strength from somewhere? So well, if, if you're starting to feel vulnerable on the yeah. group and you think, right, we might not be yeah. here for much longer, you yeah. need to know how much gap you can yeah, that's all. You'd that's think, also right, right. We'll, yeah. we'll stay here for at least another 500 metres to 500 metres nearer the end. And uh, so there's, there's that kind of mindset as well. Yeah. I don't think they're thinking of falling off the group, though. They look oh, pretty no. comfortable, both yeah. those other crews. So this is kind of the wind up to the portage, 200 meters to the turn now. I think if I was the Hungarians, I'd want to experiment on this yeah. bottom turn and just yeah, see if exactly. I can string the group exactly. out. Yeah. Just, just a test. And yeah. You don't have to finish the job off, but I would like to see if I've got it in me. So round they go. Nothing's going to change. No test. Maybe cutting the Spaniards a little bit finer. The Spaniards are having to drop back. 
Here we go into the portage. South Africans, I think, will come right again. Spaniards to the left with the Hungarians. A little bit of communication going on between the Spaniards and in early for them, in late for the Hungarians. South Africans are up and running already. It's just the time the Hungarians take to get out of their boat. Yeah. A little bit slower than the others. Their running's not as sharp as the other two crews. Spaniards making sure there isn't a route through for the Hungarians if they do fancy running harder. So, no, no one's running particularly hard there either, oh. are they? Oh. Yeah, that's, there's nothing going on there. Everyone happy, it seems, to take a break, and we're down to one portage to go. Yeah. Poster on the wall, Ivan Pochacin. We have seen it every portage over the, this weekend. It's one of the greatest C1 paddlers of all time from Romania. Absolutely. Unfortunately, he passed away just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Interesting fact there, Stefan, is that that's where I got my name from. Okay. My parents were at a canoe regatta years ago before he was even massively successful. And they were looking down the program for a name for me. And that's, I got my name from him. Wow. What a story. Kind of heritage already yep. from the start then. And that name obviously helped to get successful. <laughs> I'm not sure, but if you look at the stats in marathon paddling, there's a lot of Ivans get medals in yeah. marathon paddling. You've got Alonso, you've got Balboa yeah. and myself. Considering it's quite a rare name, you've got a high degree of success in these races. So you might yeah. be right, Steph. <laughs> Probability alone says that. Yeah, calling all from, from yeah, yeah, all from Ivan Pochacci. That's it. <laughs> Just makes sense. Yeah. That's the chase pair. Keeping the distance under 200 meters between them and the leaders now. And these two. Keeping their 140, 150 meters on the Spaniards behind them. This will be an interesting finish as well between these two. Yeah. Spaniards on their own, Osa and Toledo. About 140 meters behind the Argentinians. Argentinians were super impressive. On that first lap, Stefan, while those Hungarians were doing all the damage to the rest yeah. of this field, those Argentinians tore them up. Yeah. And uh, that's something pretty special.
Hungary, South Africa and Spain, three medals. On the final long lap, Spain two, currently in seventh position. Pilate Hossa and Aranza Toledo, bronze medalists 2019. Fourth and fifth in this group. South Africans fourth last year, or not last year, 2019. Yeah. Two Danish crews and the Russians. Winter Hostrup, Sorensen, Rudd, and Adel Shinova and Maneva. There's your lap times. Not surprisingly, all pretty similar. But uh, it was the turn of speed of the Hungarians that did the damage right from the start. So one final trip round the top turn. Round they go. South Africans lead from Spain and Hungary. And from now on, now, now on, I think the race will begin among, yep. uh, in between the, these three. Spanish yeah. come over yeah. to track the Hungarians. They want to be next to the Hungarians, not the South Africans. Yep. Convinced uh, that Hungarians will try something. Yep. And that's it's very wise to do that now while there's no pressure. Yeah. Rather than try and do it when all the pressure and the speeds have risen. So good job from the Spanish there. Also choosing the right side. Yep. It's good for many reasons, not at least to being able to choose the right side of the ponton at the portage. And all those ideas will be going through our head. It isn't yeah. a mindless trip back to the portage and then see what happens. The planning starts now. Yeah. I think that's a really good point you're making there, Stefan. Yeah, it looks, you know, to a casual observer, like they're just covering ground now, but there's an awful lot going on in their heads now. Yeah. Check in with your partner, make sure you're on the same page, check in that they're all all right, no problems, no more drinking from now on, all, all just basic communication. It's just, that's, the job starts now. So, in, yeah, the race has been two, two halves, hasn't it? You had the initial bit where the 
the split was made and that was real race on for three laps. And then that race ended. Then you had a journey and now the race starts again. It does. And uh, South Africa and Spain doesn't have any ambition to uh, either uh, other than to follow uh, what the Hungarians are doing now. I think they just, yeah, I mean, they don't want to get caught if there's no. a massive change of pace. But both the South Africans and the Spaniards must fancy themselves on the portage. Absolutely, that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's... from now on, all until the portage, they will just try to follow the Hungarians and then try to use any mistakes from, yeah. from them over the portage. I don't think the South Africans or the Spaniards have the firepower to do damage to no. the Hungarians on the water. It'd be interesting to see what Spain do here. Yeah. The nat natural I don't think, instinct I don't think will be to go round yeah. to the South Africans, but I don't think they will do that. They've made their decision. They know who's going to lead into that final yeah. portage, and they're going to be with them when they do. That's three crews very much paddling within their capability there. There's not a lot going on other than in the heads. Yeah. This group will be closing them down, I think, pretty quickly. They're down to 140 metres from nearly 200. But there's not time to do that. There's absolutely no thought of the chase pack now in this group. Oh. Seven hundred and fifty meters to the yeah. portage, and it's hard to to uh, ignore the landmarks. You'll see the Hungarians yeah. go either at the five hundred or the two hundred. There'll there'll be yeah. a marker, and which are actually pretty irrelevant in real terms. But you can't you can't ignore a marker, can you? A bridge, no. a five hundred meter line, a two hundred meter line. I think the South Africans are uh, confident enough to challenge Hungary into into the turn. Just don't think they've got the acceleration, Stefan. I think those Hungarians are just too strong. But it would be a great thing. I mean, if they did yeah. and they made it stick, go. I mean, arriving at the portage first for those South Africans yeah. would be a big ticket. Yes. I don't know. Do you get nervous around this stage, Stefan? I, I'm yeah. finding myself <laughs> sitting on the front <laughs> edge of the seat here. Always. And, yeah, you it's get like quite sitting. In, very yeah, it's, it. it's like sitting there and uh, feeling the adrenaline building up. Yep. Let's get back to that first group because it's going to kick off any minute, I think. The Hungarians have to try and go by yeah. shortly. They haven't done it at the 500, so it's going to be Spain is ready to for the 200. it. Spain is ready for it. They are quite Spain. Yeah, Spain is Spain picking are up. Trying to push it a little bit, yeah. aren't they? They want yeah. the Hungarians to go. Yeah. So they're, they're edging up, asking basically for the Hungarians to go now. Yeah. So Spain will be getting a little bit nervous at this point. Yeah. It's not working out exactly how they want it to, but the probability still says that the Hungarians will lead. Yeah. Back to the Argentinians. 
that's how you behave. Uh, they are not trying to push a little bit. Trying to make the suggestion that now's a good time. But let's get back to that first group yeah. if we can. And it's happened yeah. while we weren't yeah. <laughs> while we weren't there. But as the Spanish had predicted, the Hungarians are leading and they're leading pretty hard. Yeah. It's whether they can lead hard enough to get some distance going into the portage, and I'm not sure they can. South Africans right at the tail of their boat. But there's no real damage being done. It's not uh, top speed yet. I think it is. I think oh. that's all they've got. Not yet. Not going to leave much room on the inside, that's for sure. But Ward managing to keep that overlap. The overlap's important so they don't get pushed out to the side. There's the danger boy there. And they round that beautifully, beautifully done by the South Africans. So Hungary, Spain, South Africa. Spain will come right. South Africa oh. coming right with them. So we could have a little bit of stress on this side of the portage. going to be Spain first out. No, it's not. It's the Hungarians out. It's their best exit so far. South Africa have got some making up to do. Spain running hard. The Hungarians running the best we've seen them. They know it's game on. And the others are not coming past. Hungary leading. Spain struggling there. South Africans need to be close. They get in the boat the best, but they're falling back a little as well. So it's going to be Spain and Hungary first two away. They're going to get in pretty much the same time. It's going to be Spain away first. I think they're the quickest in. Where they go. Will Spain settle for second on Hungary or will they try for a win? South Africa, Hungary coming through, and it looks to be the Hungarians leading out from that portage. So it's going to be a win for Hungary, and it's going to be Spain versus South Africa for second and third if the South Africans can close the gap back to the Hungarians by the finishing straight. Ward working really hard to do just that. She can get to their tail before the turn, which I think she's done. Great job from them. Well, that all was pretty uneventful, Stefan. Yeah. After all that tension we built up, the Hungarians ran much better on that portage. They knew they had to get in first. And we Spaniards could see the pain run. from, uh, we could see the pain in the faces of, of um, uh, both Spain and South Africa over that portage. Really exhausted. Yeah. So the Hungarians are going to win the sprint to the finish. Then it's a really interesting game trying to come second in this. Yeah. South Africans should yeah. get around on the inside. Yeah, exactly. Although those turns are so uh, tight, aren't they? Yeah. But if you're no. on the wash no. and no. you're trying no. to push no. uphill. Yeah. Now it's the time to get on the wash down. Yeah. They're going to make that. Yeah. So the trick is, if you're one of those back boats, is to hang back on that wave and run down it to the finish. You don't want to be running uphill at the end. Hungarians. Yeah pretty much unbeatable at this stage. South Africans look like they may be falling back a little or maybe just coming wide on the wash, which isn't a bad place to be. Hungary still strong. South Africa just dropping off and the South Africans are off. 
So it's going to be Hungary, Spain. The Spaniards might have one go in them towards the end. South Africa are out of it for now. Well, for now, they're out of it. Spain holding tight. They're far back on that wave. Hungarians just too strong. Strings about to snap as the Spanish dip over the back of the wave. Hungary just too strong. Spanish going uphill now. The gap will open as they fall back over that wave. Well, they were super impressive, the strength in those two Hungarians, Stefan. Yeah. They absolutely butchered the whole field at the start and then again pulled away from the other two crews at the finish. Spaniards clearly very happy with that result. And I think and these two will be. Yeah. Ooh, geez. Yeah. Some result. Fantastic. And it was uh, another victory then for Hungary. They have won every championship in K2, uh, K2 women since 2013 when Henriette Engel Hansen and Jeanette Lovar from Denmark won on, the, on their uh, ho home turf in Copenhagen. So um, Hungary still seems to dominate this, but this was a quite unusual way. And here comes the, the previous queen of marathon. I think she still is, but... Uh, I think she still is too, Stefan. Yeah. I'll, I'll join you on that. Renate Che and Sofia Soros. Just holding off Hartley and Mackenzie for fourth place. A good race. Also for them. It was a very interesting race, this. A very, very unusual K2 women race and, and a good one. Yeah, that's the beauty of this race format, race discipline, isn't it, Stefan? Something yes. different can happen every time. And you know, we've, we've been in and around it for years and years. And you can still see yeah. a race there that you think, well, who saw that coming? Yeah. It's, it not, there's nothing predictable about this. It's not. And it will not be nothing predictable at the next race either. The no. K2 men that no, the next one's going to be in super good. Or so, so, yeah. How pleased the Spanish are there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss that. Um, need to do some other duties. But uh, the race is in good hands by you and and uh, the other support crew for for this live stream production. It has been we'll miss you, Stefan. We'll miss you. <laughs> Your informed has... comment is what we'll miss. We um, we have had a great championships from Hungary, and it's still one big race to come. So please enjoy. Bye. Argentinians, super impressive. Garo has been impressive all weekend, and really like what we're seeing there. And I'm sure these women have got a big future in the sport. Spaniards, Osa and Toledo. No, no repeat of their bronze medal from last year. And I think a lot of the crews this, today just got caught napping when those Hungarians started so fast. There was no way back, even for the all-time great Renata Che. Another great looking K2 there, very tidy. 
very synchronized. Great Britain crew, Freeman and Swarbrick in 13th place. Spaniards in shot, finishing in seventh. Seem pretty pleased with their day's work. A little bit of post-race discussion. Wasn't Hungary's day today. Danes, Winter and Hostrup next to finish in eighth place, just ahead of their teammates Sorensen and Rudd. So often there's a race within a race between teammates. Czechs, Milova and Telska. Just behind the Russians, Adelshinov and Maneva. Checks just about to go around that top turn. So as the checks finish, I can hear Ross preparing for his interviews, running through his list of questions. Your first K2 medal for senior? No. No? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, sorry. So, what it was it a big difference from? In shot there, Great Britain, Solway and Duffield, 14th place for them, just one behind their compatriots, Freeman and Swarbrick. They pulled back quite a distance on Freeman and Swarbrick over the last couple of laps. Checks finishing. It's Milova and Telska. Looking like it's a little bit uncomfortable. And as we watch them come over the line, we hand over to Ross the ICF with an interview with the winners of the women's K2. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. I'm here with our K2 world champions who just two years ago, they were junior world champions. Now they're senior world champions, which is incredible. Congratulations. How, how does it feel to be a world champion? Uh, we are very happy. It was a very good race. How was it for you, the race? There were three boats together. Uh, were you happy with the way it was going? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the second group was very uh, strong and uh, we try go faster. So two years ago you were juniors, uh, now you're seniors. Uh, how big was the difference for you to go from junior to senior to be world champions? Um. <laughs> You can answer in Hungarian if you like. We have a lot of Hungarian viewers. 
Um, and junior and senior uh, is very hard. Um, we try to go faster than we can. <laughs> well, you certainly did that. Congratulations, world champions. Well done. So Swarbrick and Freeman finishing their day at the office in 13th place and the next crew across the line will also be from Great Britain, Solway and Duffield in shot now. Behind them, the two crews from Ukraine, quite a long way back. So Solway and Duffield make their way to the end. Slowly begin, there's one of the Ukrainians there. 572 is Sheva and Sheva from Ukraine. 500 meters to go for these two. And 561 coming into the portage, Andrukiv and Yurkovich. Andrukiv and Yurkovic with 1,000 metres to go, and the Esheva sisters yet to go over their last portage. It's Great Britain's Solway and Duffield finish in 14th position. And some Romanians on there, 573. I think they must have lost their tracker. We go Ukraine, well, kind of, kind of away. Now they're away. So last few meters for Solway and Duffield. Solway from Elmbridge Canoe Club, Duffield from Norwich Canoe Club. Just got together this year. Ukrainians head off for their last thousand meters. Five six one will be our next finisher, Andrew Kiv and Yurkovic. Just heading up to the top turn.
Five seven three Trefescu and Pruna from Romania. So as the final K2 women finishes make their way to the line. Just going to leave you for a few minutes before the men's K2 starts at 12.30. See you in about 10 minutes. Can get a snack and a drink and we'll be back refreshed, ready to go. So well done to everyone who's raced this morning and we're looking forward to the men's K2 final race of the weekend at 12.30.
So there's the results of the women's K2, Hungary, Spain, South Africa. Big names in fourth and fifth. And the new names around from that point on. Going down to the Russians, Czechs, Swedes, Great Britain in 13th and 14th, Romania 15th and Ukraine taking the last two positions. Kessler and Huey at DNF for today. Next up, the men's K2, and it's some race. There's the medal table, three more medals for Hungary this morning. Denmark, again, adding to their total. Argentina, Belarus, Great Britain, Italy, South Africa, Czech Republic, France and Serbia all on the table. 16 countries on the medal table, and that has to be a good thing. Senior men's K2, same boats we've just seen in the senior women's K2. Two people, one boat, sitting down, double-ended paddle, and a rudder operated by the front man. We've just had news of a scratch from this race, 6.17, which is Broden and Lindbergh. McGregor and Lovemore both really impressive yesterday and with a point to prove. Fishev and Bratash, Ukraine. Argentinians, we've seen good in all the races so far. Boros, we saw there paddling with a different partner because Salty, who he's raced with for the last few years, is now in with jean Ori Ori in 6.15. Carré and Boulanger. Boulanger, so good yesterday. Carré, not his day, but maybe has something as a driver in a K2. 624, Matt and Dan Johnson. Matt Johnson, awesome in the short course. Unlucky to take a swim on one of the turns, but showed that he can mix it with the big guys. So everything to play for in this one. There's Portuguese, Faria and Rodriguez as well. Got Italians. Hungarians, the Garakachia brothers in 614 from Argentina, and the Danes in this one. We've got Knudsen and Pedersen. Not Mads Pedersen, but Noah Pedersen. Thorben Rask and Nikolai Winter also. Thorben didn't have his day in the under 23 K1, so again, he's got a point to prove. And we could see him be up there in the front group. One of the best drivers in the world at the moment, in my opinion. Urban and Candy, of course, 609, the one to watch. Urban and Candy, maybe the surprise winners last year. Maybe not. They've been on the up for a long time, and last year was their year. Boros, second last year with Christian Mate. This year, a different partner. There's the Johnson brothers. Dan in the front, the yellow hat, Matt in the back. Danes there. Two British crews, Romanians in the foreground. Six one five, Ori and Salty. Salty in the back as he was with Boros way back 
when the World Championships was in Hungary and responsible for one of the biggest upsets at that event. Certainly upset me as a commentator because he made me look a proper chump when I called it so badly wrong when he overtook the South Africans in the last 200 metres. So as they come to the line, from the bottom up, we have Hedin and Maxted from Sweden, Faria and Rodriguez from Portugal, Johnson Brothers from Great Britain. Two above them, Spain, Plaza and Laurens. Laurens, very good yesterday. Two above them, Carré and Boulanger in the white boat. Everyone on the line. And I've run out of time to tell you anything beyond that. Red boat in the middle needs to come back. They're not aware that they're not being held. And now everything's under control and ready to go. Portuguese a bit eager, two up from the bottom. Away they go. And it's going to be a long time until we can pick out some names in this one. Danes in the middle with Rask showing early. Johnson and Johnson in the blue boat to the right also looking pretty good there. It's the Danes right in the centre with the red nose and the white boat there. France, Urban Candy. Rask making a point. Rask and Winter. Norwegians, Bolds in the middle also. Urban Candy, Johnson Johnson right up there. So Rask leads Urban and Candy with them. Uh, Carrie Boulanger also there. Argentinians there too. South Africans struggling a bit. In the blue boat. That's Hart and Rice. Now the group begins to form. Hart and Rice find a nice little slot at the back. Didn't end too badly for them. Russians in the red. Boros, second from the right of the screen there. Really big spread on this. French going left in the red boat. Boros having none of it. He's coming around. He wants to get into that thick of the race there. Rask still dominant in terms of speed. French hold off the Hungarians, or do they? No, they don't. Boros makes it stick. French drop back into the V, taking the Argentinians off the V. On the right come the Volds. Johnson's in the blue boat. Just need to get back in touch. But the speed is very high at the moment. So Rask, Winter, Carré, Boulanger, Vold, Vold. Hart and Rice making their way up there from South Africa. And still the changes happen. Nothing is settled in this group yet, and that is hugely stressful. Drivers have to have their eyes out the whole time, looking left, looking right. You have to see where the attacks are coming from. Spaniards with a white visor made a big move there, came up, got themselves in contention. Volds with the red stripes, red bands around their shirt, and the red boat. French in their distinctive stripy shirts. Argentinians tucked in behind the garages. Rask in shot now. Boros 
also challenging. There's mess in the back of that group. There's all sorts happening there. Survived. They make their way up to the top turn. And it begins to settle. Rask has been dominant up this first leg. Rask and Winter. And to their right, Carré Boulanger. Again, challenges at the front. People wanting to break into the heart of the group. French coming round on the left in the red boat. Pushing up, holding off the people on their left. Could be the South Africans. That's a South African kind of move coming in at an angle like that. That's going to be McGregor, I think. Super aggressive, paid off. Still find themselves stuck on the outside of a group that's going to be too big for the turn. Hungarians try again. I think it's still, that's the French leading now. Carré, Boulanger, Rask and Winter to their left. On the outside, again, goes, I don't know, sorry, guys. That is pretty intense up there at the moment. Four boats, neither of which want to give up the lead. There's a massive collision behind them. That's France and somebody. French survive, make their way to the left of the group. people all over the place. French come all the way around the outside, get onto the lead wash. They're strong. South African crews both together in the blue boats. around the top turn while the presentation goes on.
So uh, while the presentations are going on, there were lots of changes. Quite an aggressive group. Still, the aggression continues. You can see how people come round, squeeze people back into the V, and that circuit will go round and round. Ross currently on the right-hand side of the group. He had a torrid time while the presentations went on, struggled to make contact with the group, and now has found himself on the outside. Leading currently, Carré Boulanger. To their right, the Garocachea brothers from Argentina. To their left, Urban and Candy in the red boat. Rask on the far side. Spaniards this side with Julian and Fernandez. Plaza and Laurence also in there from Spain. They're currently holding the front B-wash. Behind them and to the right is Boros and Erdeli and the two South African boats make up the final two in that group. So, Harry Boulanger lead from their teammates. Most people reasonably settled now in this group, but there's a couple more coming from the group behind, and that's going to stir things up a bit. Belgium there, Russia. Not sure where in the field we are with that view. Apologies for that. Here we are at the front again. Carré, Boulanger, Garakachea, Garakachea. From Argentina and Rask and Winter. They're the three boats in shot. Red boat belongs to Candy and Urban. Tucked in the back, the Spaniards. Having a nice ride of it as it stands. South Africans in blue. Vold and Vold coming up in the red boat on the right-hand side. Group gets bigger. No real stress. Not many people in here mind a big group. Boros on the far side with Erdeli. Vold and Vold this side. Rice and Hart, and at the back of the group there, Borgotti and Pelosi of Italy. Closest to the bank, Knudsen and Pedersen trying to break into the group, but up goes the speed. Not sure what triggered that, but it's the French pushing on at the front. Hart and Rice struggling at the back of the group there, just to keep in contact. Urban, Candy, take the lead. To their left, to their right rather, Candy and oh, Carré and Boulanger. To the right of them, Gurukachea from Argentina. Rask on the outside with a red-tipped boat. Through comes, no, it doesn't. It's still Candy and Urban. Julian and Fernandez, the Spaniards closest to them, and Plaza and Laurence currently in the V-Wash. Urban Candy, world champions two years ago. Already one big lap done. It's been fairly intense. And it won't be any easier going around this group. Blue boat of McGregor just in shot. McGregor and Lovemore. Italians at the back of the group. Being held up by the Norwegians who are struggling to get round the corner. Through go the French. 
Spain lead now with Julian and Fernandez. Carey holds off the Argentinians on the outside. Doesn't want to be pushed into the back. That forces him to lead. So France still lead. Carey and Boulanger. Hungarians around the outside, trying to squeeze out the Argentinians. Argentinians pretty aggressive. They're going to hold their position. They need to fall back and slowly, too slowly. No, they're still trying to hold against the Hungarians because the French on the other side also have an overlap on their teammates. And now that's going to be, that's why you don't want to make contact. Everyone gets delayed. It's the French that won the battle in the end. Now it kicks off, Spain coming round on the outside. Spain and Spain, both flat out. So there's a lot of stress in this group. They go hungry now with Boros. Both South Africans tucked in the back of the group, Hart and McGregor. McGregor comfortable at the moment. Again, the speed picks up. Italians on the outside beginning to suffer. The Volds just can't quite make their way back into the comfort of the group. Hart and Rice. Round the outside in the blue boat, dropping back perhaps. Spain lead from France. France, again the French attack on the right. Candy, Urban. Rask and Winter making a run for the group on the left. Suggests they were falling off the main pack there and hoping for a lift back. 6.20 Serban and Sandulescu from Romania. Pack with the Danes, Great Britain, Portugal maybe. Argentina. So the main group just out of sight, down close to the edge of the lake. Fernandez and Julian lead. Bowser and Lorenz also from Spain in second carry and Boulanger with them. Candy and Urban fourth at the moment. Bold and bold on the left of his shot there. Always been right on the edge of the group. They're making a run for a group to the left now. Maybe they're not. They're just going out on their own again. Just not comfortable mixing it with the group. Italians on the far side there. This is really tight up the edge. Spain and Spain. France third, France fourth, South Africa. Prime spot at the moment for McGregor. Two South Africans really comfortable there now. They'll be taking a breather. So big group then, Spain, Spain, France, France, Argentina, South Africa, Denmark, South Africa, Hungary, and the Norwegians at the back of that group. 
bold and bold. So nine votes in that group. Actually, there's 10. So who's the last one? Boros and Erdeli from Hungary. So looking a little bit more settled. Bold and bold choosing to stay on the outside of the group instead of ducking one place to their right and having a much more comfortable ride in that V wash. Again, go the Spanish at the front. So Plaza and Lorenz try take the lead from their teammates Julian and Fernandez. Group changes shape again. McGregor covering both options for leaders there, staying between those two leaders for as long as he needs to before one wins the battle and he'll move across. Still not decided. As soon as it's decided, McGregor will drop back. There you go. And onto the tail of Plaza and Lawrence. But again, away on the right, the other Spanish having to hold off the French on the right there. McGregor moves across, absolutely having a ball. He's exactly in a world that he's familiar with, moving from V-Wash to V-Wash. And that is why you win so many races, because that sort of stuff, basics, are done so, so well. Rask in trouble on that first turn, boy. The difference in energy between the job that McGregor's doing and the job that Rask is doing right now is massive. So Spain from Spain, from France, South Africa, France again, Argentina on the far side, Hungary in the white boat at the back. And again, the lead changes. This time, McGregor chooses to come out to the left, onto the side. Come out there, knowing that if the attack happens on the left, he gets pushed back into the V where he wants to be anyway. If the attack doesn't come on the left, he's got it covered on the first wash. Attack comes on the right. Spanish motivated to hold on to the lead. McGregor left. Fernandez and Julian on the right. Attack on the right again from the Argentinians. This will be a hard one. Up go the French. Up go the, the Spanish. Everyone motivated to keep their position at the front at the moment. Boros into the V-Wash. Looking good. Attack on the left. Gregor moves out, says no. Wants to hold on to that side. He's going to find himself in the lead if this carries on much longer. Now he's moved right to hold off the Spaniards and will move back to the leader on his left now. Another attack on the right. This is pretty relentless right now. Spain versus Spain to take the side wash of the French, Carré and Boulanger. Rask finally finds himself at the front of the group. Boros in the white boat, trying to get on terms. Bolds just can't seem to mix it with the group. They're going to find themselves traveling a lot in the lead or on their own today with the Italians right now.
French in the red boat, take on Boros, push him into the V, takes Rask out of the V. There'll be an attack on the right coming from McGregor, I think, now. Just moving out, waiting for a second. Not sure who that is going out to the left there. Hart and Rice seem to have lost connection with that group. They're the lone boat just behind the group. The group will slow at some point. But all the time it's churning like that is such a hard thing to do to catch up. Well, wow, that's a nice overview of the whole area. Look at that. So, around comes Boros, cuts off the Spanish. Spanish take out the French. French duck round the back, come round for their next circuit around the group. French are out of shot in a red boat. Going to be coming in from somewhere shortly. Here comes McGregor on the left. Took a little break before he attacked to get to the front of the group again. He's going to come in at quite a steep angle. And the Spaniards saw that coming. McGregor hoping the Spaniards go all the way, but they don't still France lead. Here comes the red boat of France. Carré leading with Boulanger. Gregor thinking of plan B. The Spaniards were too good for him there. And he needs to find another way to get back into the comfort zone. Just to push up and hope that the Spanish take the lead is one method here. French press on again. Rask in the back of the group. Reasonably comfortable. As are the Argentinians. So Portage this time around. Portage one of seven. France have the initiative. Carré is going to hold that position all the way around the turn. To his left, Boros and Erdélie. To his right, Julian and Fernandez of Spain. Everyone round that boy nicely. Now the straight line to the portage. And most people have gone left. Just watch for mistakes. It's the French away. Hungarians, Spanish and Spanish. So carry in control as it stands. Boros, closest we've seen him to being in the front group at this stage of a race for a long time, running well. Spaniards, three and four. Away you go the French, away you go the Hungarians, Spaniard one, Spaniard two, and McGregor. So five boats away, Hart and Rice. It's going to be a long day for them now.
Johnson brothers, the Danes there, Argentina and Portugal. Maria and Rodriguez from part Portugal. Kaffa and Kaffa from Argentina and Knudsen and Pedersen from, Spain, from Denmark. Sweden's head in and Maxstead. Hart and Rice, top of the shot there on their own, no man's land. They're going to be caught, I think. Boros leads. Carey, Boulanger, and the two Spaniards. McGregor is going to have to find some comfort in that group. Hanging off the back there is going to be very uncomfortable right now. And that's constant stream of boats. A little bit chaotic. They'll all format form groups at some stage. Part and Rice on their own decisions to make. Hungarians let the Spanish come through. Can't really help you situations like that. So Plaza and Lorenz leading. Romanians in shot. Denmark, Great Britain, Germany, I think. Romania's running through the portage. Wow, that looks like a bit of a breakup. There, it looks like two Spanish and French are away. Hungary and South Africa. Oh, no, there we go. Still a group of five. Urban Candy and the Argentinians, the two boats to the left of the flag there, trying to close down that group. Only about 50 metres behind in the main group. And quite a long way round. Still led by the Spanish, Julian and Fernandez. It's the South Africans still getting the rough end of the deal there. Fifth wash. Red boat chase group is the French. South Africans having to work hard there. McGregor up in fifth place. Hungarians lead. France, Spain, Spain, Hungary, France and Argentina.
McGregor maybe drop round, yes, onto the inside. He's done it all before. There's an opportunity at the end of this turn to break into that group of four, and that's what he's desperate to do right now. After this boy, he's got to get out to the, out to the side. There he goes. And he'll make the run up the left-hand side. And this is it. This is his play. It's almost a lifesaver if he can do it. It's a long way round, though. Up to the side wash. And what a lucky break. Well, lucky, you kind of force your own luck. Or is it going to fall for him? He's still going to be second wash out. The other Spaniards are going. You wonder whether the Spaniards are working against him. McGregor, fifth wash. Spain, France, Spain, and South Africa. Hungary on the right, left as we look at them now, with Boros and Adelie. Urban Candy, world champions, to far right of your screen, red boat. Danes, Rask and Winter back in the third pack at the moment. Didn't survive the portage, coming in last at the portage and uh, lost touch with this lead group on their own in eighth place. Urban Candy, bottom of your shot, Red Boat, gradually making their way back with the Argentinians. They're going to duck into, maybe they're not, maybe they're going to come up the outside of the group. I'm going to duck into that wash behind the Spaniard with the white hat on. Where the Argentinians are going now, Boros goes again on the right. Spaniards move out round to the right of him. It's a V-wash opening up in between them. Nobody's going for it at the moment. Spaniards, French want to come round. Spaniards, the Spaniards will let that happen. No stress at all. They fall straight back into the V. Comfort zone for them. Argentinians settled in the back, very close to the edge now. Boros so close to the edge, the Spaniards have to drop onto the half V. Strings the group out. McGregor, Lovemore, still sat second out. Settling in there. It's not your first choice, but settled for that for now. So Boris taking the group very close to the edge, restricting the group to a shape that gives as least rest as possible to the boats behind him. Looking strong. A long way back now, 200 metres to Rask and Winter, and even further back to Hart and Rice. And there are two individual boats, and then it's way, way back to Vold, Vold, and another group with Borgotti, Pelosi of Italy, and Johnson and Johnson of Great Britain, along with Portuguese, Faria, and Rodriguez. France lead now. Carré. Boulanger, Boulanger had such a great day yesterday. Found himself on his own in his K1, settled into his rhythm. Argentinians coming round the right-hand side of the group. They want to get into front of this group. 
Spanish so far have held everyone off. Already had a look. A look over their left shoulder then to see who was in the V. See what the situation. Here comes Urban and Candy. McGregor is not going to have that. He's going to move out left on them. Then move back in to the lead wash. Again come Urban Candy. McGregor doesn't want to do it again. Settles for the V. V won't be there long. Through come the Spaniards on their teammates. McGregor forcing his way up so that oh, it's, it's well, it's all happening. It's too quick to talk about. Spaniards end up in the V. Hungarians on the left. McGregor goes round the right hand side. It's hard in there right now. A lot of discomfort. Urban Candy, two attempts to get off that second wash and failed on both. They need a break. Argentinians quite efficient in the back, didn't get involved with any of that, just took what was left. Doing well. Rask and Winter on their own in no man's land, nearly 300 metres behind these guys. That is a big group there. That's 400 metres, nearly 500 metres back on the lead pack. But it looked like it was quite fun in there too. About eight boats in that group. Portage number two. France lead, Hungary, Urban Candy not having it their own way. McGregor at the back of the group with the Argentinians. There's going to be some aggression to that right side with McGregor and the Argentinians. Both came in, both came in safely. Spaniards away. So France with Carré coming in for a drink. Spaniards running together, Hungarians in the white shirts to the right. All four looking very composed. They're the four that have some degree of control over what's happening in this group. Urban Candy running well. McGregor Love more going to swap sides. A little bit of a gap opening up. It's still a ride with the Argentinians. It's going to be South Africa and Argentina taking their time to catch up. Rask and Winter, not their day. It's been a rough weekend for Rask this weekend. Compare this to 2019, and you're looking at a very different feel. One of Denmark's rising stars. Through come the Johnsons, the Volds, Howden, Dowden, sorry, and Howe. So from Great Britain. Carré leads at the front. Urban Candy, contact. Boros Adelie. Then Plaza and Laurence. Julian and Fernandez. 606, Julian and Fernandez with the visor. Big group running through the portage now. 
Bird by the Johnson Brothers in Great Britain. Sweden coming through now with Maxted and Hedin. Back to the sharp end, Boros leads. McGregor coming in at angle, feels he can get to the back of that group. We stayed out to the point where you can run down the wave and make contact with the group. Rask and Winter looking dominant on the first thousand meters. But the constant change of pace got to them in the end. I found myself at the back of the group. Teammates even further back. Knudsen and Pedersen currently in 20th position. Julian and Fernandez. Leading from Urban and Candy, Boros, Erdeli, Plaza Laurence, Carey, Boulanger, McGregor, Lovemore, and Garakachea, Garakachea. Russians, Ukrainians, and Belgians all through the portage. Vivec and Bratash from Ukraine, Cox and Coombs from Belgium, and Serban and Sandulescu. No, sorry, Epishin and Popov from Russia. Group reforms at the front, round to the left go the Spanish. Across the back of the group comes McGregor. Still, the group doesn't settle. Spain out to the left. I think it's Laurence just about to cut in. Change of V. Everyone shuffle round. Whoever that was wasn't quick enough out the V, but they're going to go round the right. Gregor settling in at the back. Lead changes, has to cross over. It's a waiting game at the back there to see how the group settles. Gregor moves forward into a wash. That's his own. Tight on that right side against that bank there. Super tight. It's a little bit stressful still in this group. Urban Candy lead. Plaza and Laurens to their left. Boros Adeli to their right. The other Spaniards tucked in the back, Julian and Fernandez. French out on the right hand side. McGregor tucked into the V. May choose. He's going to stay there. Argentinians come on the inside. Good move from them. Trying to move up just one or two places in the group. It's not going to happen for them. The door's been shut by McGregor. Urban Candy taking it to them. Top four comfortable. Back three stressing at the moment. Away goes Boros. Boros trying to stretch out the group. Gap opens up in the middle, closes in again. Candy takes the V. 
McGregor V in front of him. It's hard work to get there. Just got to get his nose to the white tail of Carre. He's in there now. Argentinian struggling on the outside at the back. Boros, we know, will come down close to the edge, and that's going to reshape the group again. So Boros with Cat with Carey on his right. Julian and Fernandez to their right, second washout. They're going to find it tight against the bank of the lake shortly as Boros makes his way in. Still room for two. Urban Candy, very settled. There go Julian and Fernandez, held off by Carre. McGregor and the Argentinians both caught for speed. Urban Candy slip into the V. It's going to be taken off them by Boros and Urban Candy have to go out round the right hand side. Didn't do it comfortably, didn't do well there. Here they go. They're going to try and come round Julian and Fernandez to get to the their teammates, Carré and Boulanger. Carré flanked by the two Spaniards, Boros in the back. McGregor settling into the V again. On the right come the Spaniards holding off the other French. Urban Candy failed attack. French go again. Spain to their right. Boros takes the V. Speed going up and up. Three people in a row. Nobody is brave enough to let up, waiting for a leader to establish themselves before they drop back. Carre leads. Round comes Candy, held off by Julian and Fernandez. Again, we have three people side by side. It's going to get tight. South Africa and Argentina really struggling, I think, for speed. Boros also struggling at the moment. Speed won't stay like this for long. A leader established himself. Boros dives straight back for the V. Brilliantly done. Julian and Fernandez lead. Carre been well organized throughout with Boulanger. Round come the Spanish, held off by the French. Carre just does not want to be pushed back into the speed changing, and a gap has opened up now. McGregor and the Argentinians looking a little bit jaded back there. Too many changes of pace. One too many for them. Round come Urban and Candy. Julian Fernandez trying to hold them off. Urban and Candy find themselves as the new leaders. Round goes Boros to the right hand side, dropping in Laurens of Spain into the V wash. Five boats now, uncomfortable. But manageable.
200 metres to the turn before portage number three. Candy and Urban in control at the moment. Julian and Fernandez to their left, Boros to their right. Boros makes a move. Back further down the pack, Rask, about 500 metres off the pace with Hart and Rice, just the two of them. Up comes Boros again. Not sure why he's that far back. Followed up by the Spaniards, Laurence and Plaza. Carré Boulanger at the back of this one. In the white hat. South Africa and Argentina still in touch. Any bad portages from these front five and South Africans make it back into the group. It's the Spanish on this side. Laurens have messed up slightly. They're going to be out way after the others. Boros running well. Spaniards up and running well now. Laurens in for a drink. Both Spaniards in for a drink. Oh, I can't believe it. Julian and Fernandez have taken off their white visor. I've got no way of recognizing them anymore. So, not sure which Spanish crew's which now. McGregor, potential to get in touch with this group. So, so close, but no. Urban Candy move away. Boros on their tail. Big group, about 700 meters down on the leader. France, France, Spain, Spain, and Hungary. McGregor running in behind. Looks like he's going down a wave. Should be comfortable. Just got to pick off one wave at a time if he wants to get back to this group. Urban and Candy pressing on. Carré, very comfortable on that last portage, straight back into the front of the group. Plaza and Laurence to the right. McGregor back in, nicely done. The other South Africans not having such a good time of it. Hart and Rice. with Rask and Winter. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Big group running through now. Rehov and Kemistrenko. Check Mistrenko rather from Ukraine. Powerful and Schubert from Germany. Faria Rodriguez, Portugal. Johnson Johnson from Great Britain. Bogotti, Pelosi, Italy. Vold and Vold from Norway. Ori and Salty from Hungary. 
They'll be closing down, I think, on that pair. Just behind them, Dowden and Howe from Great Britain, and the other Ukrainians, no, Argentinians, sorry, Kaffa and Kaffa from Argentina. Great shot of how close these guys are taking it to the edge here. Clearly, the Spanish leading at the moment, Plaza and Laurens, are trying to make it as uncomfortable as possible for those behind. Limit the number of V washes available. Now they stop. Through goes Carry. On their right comes Boros, dropping back into the V. Argentinians there also now. Big chase pack. Johnson's from Great Britain on the far side. Ryahov and Tikmistrenko leading that group back to the front. Carey leading. Herb and Candy at the back. France front and back of the front group. Argentina in the white boat back with the red French boat. Spain and Spain looking comfortable. Hungary haven't done, done anything wrong so far. Carey also very much in control of what's happening to him in this race. Through the portage, Epichon and Popov. Bivec and Bratash and the Danes, Knudsen and Pedersen. Just behind them, Cox and Coombs of Belgium. So group of seven still at the front. Things at least for now a little bit more settled. Urban Candy, world champions to the right of shot in the red boat. Carré Boulanger leading at the moment, their teammates. course now into a slight headwind. Tight on that first boy from Carey. Gregor couldn't quite get round, lost just a little bit of ground along with the Argentinians again. McGregor needs to keep his nose just inside that white plume off the back of the boat in front of him and does it beautifully. The moment you cross that, your boat gets turned outwards. There he goes. Now he's going to move out because he wants to go to the V. Little V of safety just been taken off him now. A lot of work there. And had it taken away just at the last minute. Spaniards will come around the French boat, red boat there. Be a brief moment where a V opens up for McGregor. He'll take that while he can. There it is. He's on a roll down now. And then as the group closes in again, he should go behind. There should be a space behind those Spaniards. He's straight into it, and that's how you do it. You learn so much from watching these drone shots in these K2 races. McGregor superb at finding the best place to be.
So Boros leads. Laps ticking away slowly. Three portages done, four to go. Gregor gets squeezed back in and straight to the other side. Same wash, just the other side. That was the Argentinians couldn't cope with the pace on the outside. Round go Urban and Candy. McGregor has to sit and wait to see who's going to lead. Gaps aren't going to open up just now. He's in danger of it closing down. Go left. Straight away sees it. And hoping that the new leaders will leave space. He has to go to the right of that boat now. Chooses to come left. Roll down that big wave on the left. Argentinians tuck in and get the wave, but not for long because round go Urban and Candy. Boros cuts out the French. Here comes McGregor, wants to get on the front. He knows Boris well. He knows Boris is happy to drop back to the V. Parry gets shut out. The French on the right have to hold off the second Spaniards. Pace will pick up. Boros in control at the moment. Pretty much taking what he wants. Round come, South Africans, Spanish, say no. No, they don't. It's hard to say no. Tank McGregor, when he's in the mood for overtaking. Round on the right-hand side come the French. Carré, Spanish, try to hold them off. Change of speed is going to start hurting people shortly. Boros comes around, takes on McGregor. Wins that one. Confusion at the back of the group there. It's not sitting well at the moment. Urban Candy untroubled at the front. Argentina, South Africa. Consistently seem to be the ones that end up at the back after those confusing reshuffles. McGregor, so good at seeing what's going to open up, but ultimately seems to be caught for a little bit of speed. Argentinians off the group as it stands. McGregor back into a nice, comfortable position. Boros continues to impress. Right place, right time. Long way back now to these guys. Over 600 meters. Coming down to portage number four. Urban Candy lead. Argentina still a little bit in danger at the back of that group. A change of speed now, which there is, is going to be trouble for Argentina. Urban Candy, very, very strong. Decided they were going to be first into this portage. Good few hundred meters back. 
and upheld that position for us. Impressive. And where the Argentinians are, that gap has opened up on the Argentinians now. They find themselves back and alone this time. This time on the last lap, they still had McGregor for company, but not so anymore. Urban, Candy. Spaniards and Hungarians, a little bit of tension there. Managed it well. French dominant at the moment. McGregor making a run for it. It's a good opportunity for him to get into the tidy end of the group, and he's leading the portage. And that will just give him a much needed breather. Hungarians down, Spaniards down. And away they go. Absolutely superb from McGregor. It's fishing for what was left over at the end of the group and now has positioned himself. Fairly dominant position and he's going to get a nice, relatively easy thousand meters up. While the others have to do all the changing. That's experience for you. Argentinians look like they may have called it a day. And neither of these crews are having the race they chose. So McGregor finally getting to choose how hard he works rather than having it dictated to him. Boris, super cool. Been on the side most of the time. Holding off the Spaniards to his left. Rask and Hart both coming in. Same side of the pontoon. Rask up and away. Hart up and away. So four porters is down, three to go. Now down to six, the Argentinians are gone. Big group here with the Vold, second Hungarians. Johnson and Johnson, Great Britain, Portuguese, Faria and Rodriguez. Got some Ukrainians in there as well, Ryhov and Chemis Chekmistrenko. And the Germans just off the pace in that group by some 20 meters. So McGregor taking a rest.
Spain making a play for McGregor's side. Boros will move out to hold them off. Tucks into the V. Urban Candy lead. McGregor gratefully takes the V as Carey goes around his right hand side. Should have that all the way to the turn now. <clears throat> Finally, McGregor's at a whole length of the lake of his choosing. Oh no, maybe not now. It goes Spain round the outside. The other Spanish hold him off. McGregor will move left. He needs to be between the red and the white boat, waiting to see who leads. White boat leads. McGregor tucks in behind, moves across to the other Spaniards. Nicely done. Round go Urban and Candy. McGregor will move up the left of the boat to protect himself from Urban and Candy. It's going to be a collision. It's going to be tight, but McGregor's going to win this one. So what he did there, he knew he was going to be squeezed out of the V, so he got an overlap on the leaders. So when the French ended up, Spanish there, ended up in the V, he could drop back on them again. Same again here. He's going to move up. He hasn't got a lot of room to move up this time. And as Urban and Candy get squeezed in, no, he couldn't make that stick. Tried the same again, but whoever was to his left, I think it's um, Boros, didn't leave him room to pull that move off a second time. Gregor finds himself back of the group again. Pace not quite so high. Plaza on Laurent's lead. Oh no, sorry, Julian and Fernandez lead. Cross to their left. Everyone pretty happy at the moment. Plaza and Laurent's left of shot are the only ones who may fancy a change. There they go. Saw a little opportunity when Carey put his paddles down. Carey quick to get back into the action, though. Carey forced to lead straight into the V. Candy, Urban, McGregor having a little bit of a fight on his hands here. A straight line like that doesn't help McGregor much at all. But the gap's opened up. He'll be straight in there behind the white boat. No, still, it doesn't settle. Spain coming around the outside of the French. Boros on the left, having an easy time of it. Gregor running right. Un unpleasant gap opened up there, a length for McGregor. He's waiting for the gaps to open up in the back of the group. And there it goes to the left of the red boat. That's where he's going to No, even now that's changing. It's heavy duty out there right now. Gregor needs that group to settle to the right of the red boat. Now he sees an opportunity.
going to settle for long enough for him to get there. Just needs half a length more. Move to the red boat now, and he'll take a breather. Spain leading, Julian and Fernandez. Gregor settled next to the red boat of Urban and Candy. Lead changes, Laurens goes through, out to his right goes Carre, up to his tail goes McGregor. There's got to be action on the left of the group now. Boros starts that action, holds off, held off by the Spanish, back to the old leader, Julian and Fernandez again. McGregor tracks behind, comfortable. Round come Urban and Candy. Boros always happy to be pushed back into the V, pushes McGregor back one more slot. Round the right-hand side comes Carre. Up goes Boros, seemingly happy, in control of where he's going. He ends up in the V, McGregor pushed back, half V again, or second V, in between Boros and Candy. Romanians at the back of the field. Serban and Sandulescu. Just coming out of the portage. At the same time, these guys pass that same end of the portage. Speed is high. South Africans and Danes continue their journey together. They've been a pair for a long time now. I suspect that will go on till the end of the race. First time we've seen Boros in trouble. Having to move out wide, come around the inside of the group, hoping to get there before the turn, but it's a long way and he's going to be held off by Candy and Urban. He'll be hoping that Candy and Urban take the lead. But they're just doing enough to hold him off. They're happy on the Spanish wash there. Now they go. And they are going to take the lead. And Boros falls well for him again. The Argentinians on their own now. Long way back, I think. A couple of hundred metres back from the lead group. Round comes Carey. It's just relentless, held off by the Spanish. The Spanish are going to try and make it stick. They fail. Carey will go on to Urban Candy. Boros protected on the left hand side. Not sure where McGregor is. He's not on that group right now. It's still dangling off the back. It's been a Tough leg for McGregor again. Urban Candy looking good. Boros been very well managed. Spaniards Julian and Fernandez been good throughout, but starting to look a little bit more tired, I think, at the back of that group. They're the one on the outside. McGregor still in touch. Ha, a V between the two Spaniards. He knows he can outrun most of these.
Urban Candy first to the portage. Carre over overruns them. Spaniards in a spot of bother having to wait there. Gregor out. Last runs well. So France, France, Hungary, Hungary looking good for me. Spanish beginning to look a little bit tired with Julian and Fernandez. And we've got five, four boats comfortable. Fifth one away now. Gregor and Lovemore away. A little bit of a catching up job to do. Not too bad, though. The Argentinian's about a minute behind now. Argentina about 250 metres behind the lead group now. But a comfortable 400 metres in front of the next group behind them. McGregor out in the blue boat. Running wide, try and close the gap. This one looks like it's going to be tough. Plaza and Laurent's lead. And... Julian and Fernandez just look like they're getting a little bit strung out there. I mean, attempt to go round. It's not impressive. Rask and Winter, Hart and Rice. About 400 metres behind Garrett Chairs. Seven and a half K to go. Two big laps, one small lap. Gregor still not in contact with the group, but ducks in. He must feel he's got a wave to run down there, and he's closing now. The commitment needed now. He'll be looking at that open V on the right-hand side of the group there, which is just about to close if the French come round the Spaniards. Group speed goes up. Boros so comfortable in the back there. B wash falls from again. It's a painful leg for McGregor. He's got to get behind the red boat of the French now. Group changes again. Falls nicely for him. Hungarians coming round the right-hand side. This is serious effort. Three boats all in a row. The gap will open up again on McGregor.
Very good. Being patient. There's waves back there also. But that constant change of speed. If he can weather it now, the others get tired also. It's the last push up. And again, the group changes shape. It's killing for McGregor at the moment. Just won't settle enough. He just sees where he wants to go. And as soon as he's settled, the group changes again. He's still there, though. Now the group slows properly. No, on the left, the attack now. Group changes again. McGregor now in touch. The red boat goes round to try and go up into that half V. Now, finally made the jump. Hopefully around the turn, that will stick. Everyone holding their position. Should be okay. reforms just that one slot at the back to be filled by McGregor and everyone can take a breather hats off to the South Africans that was hard hard leg up that side now they're just hoping the group will settle for a few minutes bit of recovery time Carey covering the two options, doesn't know who's going to lead yet. Just pokes his nose up the middle between the two Spanish boats. Now can move over behind the lead boat. McGregor has to go around the outside. More attacks on the left. Boros going to squeeze. Oh, and again, another length opens up to McGregor. Way go, Urban and Candy on the right-hand side. Spaniards planning on coming round the left. It's a long route round. Gap opening up now on McGregor. <clears throat> Spain take on France. France drop into the V. Boros drops back. That little lull keeps the South Africans in the game. Boros going left. Just wants to get to the side of the red boat. Cuts the Spanish back in. Takes carry out. Carré round the right of the group. So if McGregor's found a wave at the back there, he's not having the same change of speed as all these others and may actually be gaining a slight bit of energy. I'm sure, though, he would rather be 
in contention. Urban and Candy leading and looking pretty comfortable. settles down one of the longest periods we've had with no changes Carre opting to sit on fifth for now Argentinians Nearly 300 meters back now, but still 400 meters clear of Hart and Rask chase pair. Boros Adeli looking pretty good. period of relaxation allows McGregor to get back onto the back of the group. Oh, Romanians retired. That's 620. That's Serban and Sandulescu. Everything settles. Argentinian men find themselves in the same position as the Argentine women in the previous race, going around on their own just behind the front group. Pretty much matching them for pace, just gradual, gradually losing ground. Urban Candy still leading. Forest on their left. <laughs> so Carey is the one in the white hat at the back there, and he's the one that settled this group down by just settling for the wash he's on, not trying to get to the front, and that's created a bit of a breathing space for everybody. Not least of all, the blue boat at the back from South Africa, who haven't had to suffer the speed changes that were coming too thick and fast for them to settle into the back of the group. So game back on for South Africa. It looked for a while like they might not make it. So Boros goes right. 
with Carey McGregor choosing to come left. It's going to be last out. Runs very, very well. I think Carey is looking like he's in a spot of bother. To the back of this group of five. They've been so controlled through the race, but it just looks like things are getting a little bit harder for him. Boros looking great. Candy Urban taking a bit of control. McGregor, I think, will come out pretty much where he went in, just off the back of the group. Spaniards and French crew with Carey and Boulanger having a little fight to get back to the group now as Candy and Urban are pushing on the pace. Delhi happy to push the pace further. They think this is a chance for two of them to get away, and it's certainly doing some damage. Boros and Candy, I think they're talking to each other. They know it's an opportunity. And this is a solid attempt to break the break the pack. Carey looked like he was struggling. Spaniards there, Carey on their left. Julian and Fernandez going out to the left now, but that's looking pretty desperate. And this is a long string, and there's just no chance, I don't think, at this speed that McGregor, no, there he is. That gap is opening up now. Carey in the white hat, moving in, feels he can get to the side of the group maybe, with no other reason to come in. It's looking hard for him though, last little spit and panic to get over that wave and joins in behind Urban and Candy and we're back to a group of five I think, could be four, don't know if the second Spaniards have made it yet. Urban Candy, Boros and Erdeli, definitely the ones that are beginning to shine here. South Africans look broken at the moment. Second South African crew with Denmark just leaving the portage now. They are nearly 700 metres now behind the leaders. Here are those leaders. Urban Candy looking at every bit the world champions they were last year. Just looking a little bit tougher now for Julian and Fernandez on the outside there. That sustained high pace from first Urban and Candy and then Boros and Erdeli was enough to break the South Africans. Gap between them and the South Africans just over 100 meters now. And there's no way, I don't think, closing that. Although, on that last leg down to the turn, this group could start slowing down dramatically. Candy Urban lead. Last top lap. Mm. 
So five boats still in contention, two from France, two from Spain, and one from Hungary. The other Hungarians looked like their day was over. Aslo Salty in the back of that boat, who's been used to being up the sharp end with Boros. Today, with Ori, it was not his day. Andy Urban lead. Everyone happy to rest. Julian and Fernandez choosing not to get the group churning again, and sitting on the fifth, taking what they can. South Africans, 100 metres back. Final top turn, these five. Candy Urban leaving no room on the inside. Group strings out. So a group of five, no one is really going to want to be the fifth one. One portage to go. It's possible that Urban and Candy have already made the decision that no one comes past from this point on. settled group for now. This will play to McGregor. Coming out wide to find the big rolling waves down the middle of the lake. the quiet before the storm here. So these boats just cover a thousand meters back to the turn and the final portage. thousand meters to go. Everyone resting right now.
South Africans, McGregor and Lovemore not able to gain ground even while the group is taking it relatively easy. It's such a hard couple of laps, managed it really well, but ultimately just didn't have the speed and the power to push into a comfortable area of that group. Now 108 meters back with time running out. Everyone just taking it easy. Drivers trying to decide when they make a move, if they make a move, and the back men knowing that whenever that front man wants to go, they've got one job. Very nervous times in that group right now. France and Hungary well placed to cover any attack. Spaniards in the V, vulnerable but resting. 606 on the outside there, Julian and Fernandez pretty much at the mercy of the French. Urban and Candy look very much in control right now. Coming down to 200 meters to the turn. Stress levels going right up. Boros, Adeli may be fancying their chances on the portage. <laughs> Urban Candy, I think, no, they've got the top speed. The Spanish, surely, yes, have to do something, and they're the ones that kick it off. French aren't going to have any problem holding that off, though, and that's a lot of work for no reason. Urban Candy, dominant. Boros and Adeli getting the best of this. Spaniards pretty much impotent on the inside there. There's nothing they can do to change the shape of this. Urban Candy looking very, very strong right now. You wonder if there's communication between the French as to which side of the pontoon they're going to go. Really liking what Boros is doing as well on the outside, comfortable. Spaniards in trouble. Boros waiting to see which side the French go before he breaks away from them. Everyone going right. Spaniards both break left. Boros looking good. French, Urban Candy, if they get in first, it's game over. Boros, slow out the boat. France, France, Hungary, Spanish are in trouble. Running through, it's France from France. Hung Hungarians have overtaken Carey on the inside there. So France, Hungary, France. All on the same side of the boat. They have to get in nose to tail down this side. The Hungarians put their boat outside the French. Quick to get in, but not quick enough. 
France away, and it's going to be a repeat of last year. Urban Candy just too strong. Urban Candy know they've got this now, I think. Carey going up their left. Maybe they'll leave space for him, help him beat the take on the Hungarians. Eight hundred meters to go. Three medals, I think, in view there. It's hard to see how the Spanish can pull out of that position. Boros, we know, we've seen it before. His timing of his sprint finish is superb. Carey just seems to be struggling all the time, going up the hill. Running back down now, Spanish remain in the V, destined for fourth place, I think, unless something big happens. Boros is the one who might stir this up. Everyone waiting till they know they can get to the end. The danger is, if you try and win from second there, you fall back in the end and end up with nothing. Urban Candy, too strong. Boros, quick communication with Erdelli. Carey, waiting. Spain, no say in this at the moment. There goes Carey. Carey's giving it a go. Boros will wait till late. Here goes Boros now. French have got this with Urban and Candy. I don't think there's doubt over that. It's the second place now that's interesting. Here goes Boros. Carey just fighting. Stay above that wave. It's not going to make it. It's going to be Boros second. France, Hungary, France, Spain. The Spanish just trapped in the back there. They had nothing to come round. Well, Quint in the Urban, Jeremy Candy had a tough first lap. They had to get back to the group, but they made it. They made it. They started to dominate in that last long lap. Superb from them. They controlled it all the way from the top turn. McGregor and Lovemore tried so, so hard to break into that group. And you've got to hand it to them. They stuck to that task for a long time. For McGregor, though, it's going to be sixth place behind Julian and Fernandez from Spain. Just didn't quite have that raw power. That is a fight well fought from those two. Carré 
Andre and Boulanger, third place. Garo Kachaya, brothers, solid seventh place. Majority of the day they spent on their own. Did a great job of it too. Pretty happy with their day's work. Ah, oh, man. It's like a nightmare on the last portage. For Dan and Matt Johnson. Rask and Winter coming in in eighth place. It's been a rough weekend for Rask. Not so for his sister, who won the under-23 women's K1. But for Thorben Rask, this was not the weekend he had planned for himself. South Africans, Hart and Rice, ninth place. Still trying to sort out the celebratory sinkings just beyond the finish line. Vold's come in just ahead of Perea and Rodriguez, and to their right from Italy, Borgotti and Pelosi. Vold's never really could manage the cut and thrust of the group. Celebrations in France. Two medals from three there. <coughs> Boulanger, his second bronze medal of the weekend. So the Volds across the line. Behind the folds, that's uh, Ryohov and Czech Mistrenko. <laughs> Superb racing from the French. Johnson's across the line now. Looks like they took a swim at the final portage and finishing just ahead of Dowden and Howe.
behind Dowden and Howe. Kaufler and Schubert of Germany. There's your silver medalists. Adrian Boros back to his best today. Great race management today. Always in the right place at the right time. Just didn't have the power to come past the French on the line. Howe and Dowden. Good job for them. 15th position. Behind them, Kaffa and Kaffa from Argentina. Germans, Paufler and Schubert. About five more boats to come in. That's the Romanians who were lapped, I think. Germans across the line. So it ends. Nice way to finish. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Russians there, Epishin and Popov. Just taking on the Swedes, Hedin and Maxted for 18th and 19th place, respectively. Three more out there. And while we wait for those final three, we come to Ross Solly, who's I'm sure got hold of the winners by now. Over to you, Ross. Let's hear what they've got to say. Thank you very much, Ivan. Yes, I'm down here with the world champions and uh, gee, how strong they were on that final lap. Incredible performance, just like two years ago, really. How was it today? Um, thank you. Today was a, a little bit harder because uh, there were plenty of boats, very strong and um, we felt better and better during the race, just like in Shaoxing. And um, we, we, we really would like to be in the front position uh, at each portage, because I think it, it was uh, very important, so um, everything went well. Did you feel if it came to a sprint at the end that you would be fast enough, that you would be the fastest boat? Um, yeah, we were confident about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had some... Uh, uh, hesitation at the beginning because of uh, the first postage we were like leading the second group and we say okay. I was confident in Jeremy and uh, we knew that we were gonna catch them and uh, and yeah right after that uh, I think it was the third portage or something like that I saw it was uh, 55 minutes and I say oh okay now I'm feeling good so let's start the race and uh, yeah we felt better and better and uh, yeah we wanted to to uh, lead the, the last small lap to be sure that uh, 
we were aware of the of the other boat to try to to catch us but uh yeah we were confident about the the speed we can get at the end so yeah we are very very happy and now i'm really cold as well <laughs> I, I can see your teeth chattering so i won't hold you off much longer but the you've also defended your world title which is always important was was that on your mind you've had to wait two years to do it but was that on your mind today we we paddle for two years just for for this year and uh we were very sad that the world championship next year uh, last year uh, uh, didn't take place so we really wanted to race we really, we really wanted to do it well and i think tomorrow we we answer some questions we had <laughs> and you've also i mean we've seen the we've seen that the hungarians do very well here we've seen denmark do well spain won its first medal you've had to wait for the last race for france to win its first gold medal is that uh, pleasing to finish with a gold medal for you guys yeah yes of course but uh, this is also always the the tough challenge to to raise the last one and uh, you have to wait and uh, keep the motivation and say uh, stay hungry uh, all the week long but uh, yeah it's been uh, two two years since we train every day and think about that moment every day and uh, yeah today we did it and uh, it was a tough tough year for me and uh, yeah I'm uh, very pleased and uh, very happy to to share this with uh, this guy. Tough because of challenges you've had to face, or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because of everything. But uh, yeah, to keep the motivation every day and say because of the last year, race postponed, then cancelled, then postponed, then maybe it's gonna happen. So yeah, it's hard, and uh, now we are, we were the boat to beat. I mean the. Uh, some guys said we were the the favorite of the of the race, so we took that challenge, and uh, yeah, we are very pleased to to that result. Well, Quentin, I'm worried you're going to get hypothermia, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to let you go. But uh, congratulations to both of you. Uh, I'm sure you'll be back next year to defend your world title again in in Portugal. Uh, Trebiam, uh, safe journeys, and see you next year. Well done. Yes, thank, thank you. you very can, much. Can we just say yes. somewhere? Yes. Um, hello, la France. Uh, okay. Euh, je vous dis, je voudrais dire euh, bonjour à ma femme, ma famille, mes amis, chez tout le monde à regarder. Et euh, dès que je rentre, on fait ça comme il faut. Merci beaucoup. Ouais, on vous embrasse. Merci de nous avoir suivis, de nous soutenir. Et puis on fait ça euh, à très très vite. I'll uh, throw that back to you, Ivan, to translate for the uh, for the viewers. But uh, congratulations, well done, boys, well done. Thank you. So that was Ross interviewing the French world champions. So what a brilliant race to finish on. It always is. A few highlights here. That's the start of the race. There's your eventual silver medalist on the far side. It took a while for the French to get to that front group. But once they did, as you heard in their interview, they got stronger and stronger. Always helps having someone you know in the front group with you and Cyril Carey, loads of experience. The group just gradually whittled down to five. Spanish just weakened on the last lap and there's your big finish from the French. Ultimately, it feels so simple, but it's the journey that it takes to get to that, not just the journey, and training and stuff, but the journey on the race itself. And there's your result. Urban and Candy, world champions again. Boros and Odelie, a beautifully executed race to come second. Carey and Boulanger, strong throughout. Bronze medal. Vold and Vold never really able to mix it with the big group and struggled, eventually coming in 10th place. And not to be for Laszlo Salty this year, watching his old partner get a silver medal. But for him and Ori, it was an early retirement. There's page one. They're the big guns. So what a fantastic weekend we've had. We'll have the presentation for the men's K2 and I think the women's K2 shortly.
Oh, no, just the men's K2, sorry, my mistake. So the men's K2 presentation very shortly, then a highlights package from the whole four days, and then the introduction to the World Championship for Portugal 2020, where I'm sure the presentation will be superb. Um, there's Marcos will not allow it to be any other way, that's for sure. There's your final medal table. Hungary, 23, Denmark, 6. Spain, seven, only one gold, though. That was the C2 today. France, gold and two bronze. Two bronzes from one athlete. That was Boulanger. Great Britain, two medals, silver and bronze. Again, one athlete, Lizzie Broughton, coming good, as she has done for several years now. And the South Africans go home this time. No golds, no silvers. A little bit of a change of guard for them, but you can be sure they'll be back at the top of the table in the not-too-distant future. Some great races from their juniors and some horrible, horrible luck this morning in the junior men's K2. So medal presentation. I'm on the old time schedule, so that'll be 4.50, which is around a minute's time. That's the plan. But with Ross talking to the French for so long, there may be a short delay on that. Quick thanks to everyone who's been watching over the weekend. We really enjoy doing the presentation for you. And it's nice to have some of the positive feedback that we get. We know we don't get everything right. I know I certainly don't get everything right. But uh, it's the thought that counts, right? We wait. An empty lake always looks so peaceful after the racing. A little bit of anticlimax while we just hold off for the medal ceremony. Bear with us. Show some appreciation for what those guys have just done. Stick around and watch them get their medal. Medal ceremonies look a bit bleak on screen this year because of COVID protocols. We can't have a crowd in the stands. So knowing that you guys are watching is a real bonus for the paddlers. Just waiting for the French to get their tracksuits on and that ceremony will begin as soon as possible. Hard to pick highlights from this weekend. That's for sure. And while this ceremony is going on, the crew will be putting a highlights package together from all four days. And I will try and remember what was happening when. So while we wait for the ceremony, 
hopefully we have the video from Ponte de Lima where the World Championships will be next year in Portugal. We've had the European Championships there fairly recently and what a great venue that is in Portugal. Portuguese love this sport and they will be happy to be presenting another World Championship. If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. than anything else you can imagine. Well, an awesome video that is, and it will be an awesome event. Can't wait to be there. Just a year to wait for that one. And in the meantime, you can keep replaying the video for inspiration. Fantastic. Hopefully now boys will be ready for their medal presentation. Ponte de Lima 2022 can only build on what Marathon Canoeing is building. Great TV presentation teams we've got now. We're lifting it as a discipline and sooner or later, there will be a lot of people waking up to that. Apologies for the delay. I hope they're really well dressed after all this. They must be spending a bit of time 
the wardrobe department, who knows what they'll come to the presentation as. It's still out there, hold on. We're still planning on having the medal ceremony. We're getting there. Not in a position where I can inform you too much about what the delay is, but. Ceremony just about to get underway now. Final ceremony of the weekend. Men's K2 marathon.
but uh, the award for the winning team, no surprises there. Goes to Hungary, given out by uh, Tim Cornish. And he wins Bully Star Prize. I think it's a long time since that prize went anywhere but Hungary. Domnilor, urmați de festivitatea de premiere în cadrul... 
Now we start the medal ceremony for K2 men seniors. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the K2 men seniors standard lifter will begin. Final ceremony for the weekend. Urban and Candy winning the men's K2. Boris and Odeli second. Carré and Boulanger third. And what a great race to finish on. The K2, always a big highlight. And it didn't disappoint this year. And that brings to a close. The championships from Romania. It has been an absolute pleasure working on it. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed presentation so we move on from Romania to Portugal 
after perhaps a quick highlights reel. And there we go. That's the junior man from this morning. Early showing from Poland, who then couldn't manage the group situation. C2 men, again, Poland shot out the front early. Didn't quite manage to hold on for the gold. Junior boys K2, sad finish for Simpkins there. Who we saw they swam on the last portage. A great race. There he is in the red cap. And there was their untimely disaster. The eventual winners, way too strong. Kolos Vari and Selyer from Hungary. Men C2, always a cat and mouse affair. Poland, Spain and Hungary locked horns for most of the laps. But eventually it was Spain from Poland down the finish straight and Spain took the honours. Campos getting his first medal of the weekend. A relief for him, I'm sure, and a relief for Spain. Women's K2, who saw that coming? The youngsters, Kohami and Rendesi, absolutely ripped the race apart from the word go. Four boat group, and they never looked back. The motivation always to hold off. The legend that is Renata Che, paddling with Sofia Voros, and they never let up. Spaniards went with them. So too did the South Africans of Ward and Hockley. Hockley still a junior, bronze medal in the junior, and now bronze medal in the senior K2. Absolutely fantastic performance. It's not the first time Jenna Ward has done that with a junior. But in the end, the Hungarians just too strong down the finish straight. And you can't beat a selfie. Then it was on to the men's K2, still fresh in our memory. Great race. Rask and Winter showed early on, but the relentless change of pace, group reorganization, organization and reorganization again, eventually killed off all but four. Rask had to drop back and settle for a lower position. In the end, it was the might of France took on Hungary with France in third place and the Spaniards fourth, which rounded off a perfect weekend's race in, in Baskov, Romania. So that was it from us. Presentation and drum roll for the eventual winners, Urban and Candy. A long, life-threatening interview from Ross Solly. And that's it. Romania passed the baton to Portugal. Ponte de Lima in a year's time. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for listening all weekend. Thanks to the crew who made my job so easy. And thanks to the organizers for the whole event. We will see you in a year's time. All the best.